Welcome in, my dear ones. Psychic Mia here from Spiritual Society. How does your crush feel about you? If you want to know the answer to that, then you must stick around because we are going to go into some serious details. We're going to break this all down. We're going to find out everything that you need to know about them. We're going to find out everything that's going on with you. We're going to look for blocks. We're going to see what the potential is. We're going to follow the cards and ask extra questions. So, Our mission here is to help guide you to unblock your energy through spiritual practices like tarot readings so that you can live your most aligned life. I want you to go ahead and release anything that you are holding on to, your day, your week, anything that's been going on. You can let all that go now. You're allowed to just be here now, enjoying this moment, being in your skin, being the essence of you. I want you to imagine this person now. Get them in your mind and start to tap into your intuition. We're looking at these four cards. Cards one, two, three, and four. Yes, breathe in, breathe out, and let yourself choose a card right now. Welcome in my card one, arrive. How does your crush feel about you? We are gonna do some deep diving, so let's get started. So I wanna start with the gold deck. I love this deck, it's a beautiful deck. And we're gonna just let that question sit. So let's let that question stand and percolate. How does your crush feel about you? Hmm. Get this person in your mind, imagine them, imagine their face, their body, the way they smile, the way they move, the way they interact, the way that they are in the world. Here we go. Mm. Okay. We have the two of pentacles. We have the nine of swords. We have the knight of wands. We have... The 10 of pentacles. So right away, I'm starting to see some things. So your crush does have some back and forth feelings about you. They are not solidly decided on how they feel about you. They go back and forth a little bit. And there's some other energy that's at play here that you don't know about. So we're going to find out more about that energy. But there is a little bit of an up and down in figuring out how much they value you what they uh what they really want out of uh their interactions with you there is something that is that has been keeping them up at night in a really anxious way and as i've been asking that this is how does your crush feel about you there is possibly something here that is with you an interaction with you that has been keeping them up at night now this can be an anxious card but this uh really gets into those thoughts and intelligence space when we get into the swords And there's something perhaps in an interaction, there's perhaps something they said, perhaps something they did, perhaps there is even even getting into good thoughts. I know this looks like a very stressful card and often it is, but this could even get into good thoughts where you just pop up in their mind and and they're suddenly awake again and they can't um, let themselves completely let go of their thoughts about you. So there is something keeping them up at night. Now, there's also the Knight of Wands here, and there's the Ten of Pentacles. And then these are very strong cards. The Knight of Wands is this very ferocious, fiery card. The Wands getting into that fire energy. There's also this growth energy here as well. And often this gets into, you know, passion and purpose. And and I'm feeling that there's a strong physical attraction to you. There's a lot of fire energy behind this. There's a lot of spice. There's a lot of desire. And there's also this desire to to move forward. There's this desire to just, you know, gallop in and really let this be something, turn this into something, make it, you know, make it really concrete. Now, wherever you are in your uh, journey with your crush, whether you like really interact together or not, whether you have actually elevated things more and you're, you know, really pursuing things, this all still stands. So this will, this can just be in different variations and, you know, relationships move at different times and different levels. So this is interesting. This is that really sort of like 
Ah, I want to drive forward into this. Now we also have the 10 of pentacles showing up and this is showing me that there is something, this is kind of a generational wealth card. You know, there's a lot of happiness here, a lot of family feeling, a lot of warmth, a lot of giving. And this is telling me that there is a part of them, A, that, that feels very generous towards you, thinks good thoughts about you, keeps your best interests in mind, wants what's best for you really thinks highly of you, but also a part of them that feels like there is potential from what they can glean so far that the things could actually unfold in a beautiful long-term way. There could be a long-term future with you. So there is this kind of longevity that's coming in here as well. Okay, let's continue. Uh, let's pull some more cards and we won't ask any more specific questions yet. I just want to know how your crush feels about you. And I want the cards to tell us this, this story to get some, get into some of this energy. Um, hi, King of Swords. Boom. Uh, huh. Uh, we have the fool. <laughs> we have, I'm feeling both of these. Okay. We have, uh, we have the King of Wands. Wow. We're really coming in with some strong energy, aren't we? Oh, we have the Ten of Cups. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, so immediately I started feeling like this has to do with perhaps um, perhaps some recent interaction. There's perhaps something where like, you know, things might be progressing or maybe you're just even uh, on their mind more. And so there's a different little space that's happening here. Um, and as things, as they have really taken notice of you, the King of Swords pops up and the King of Swords... Uh, a lot of strong cards here. The King of Swords is in their seat of knowledge, in their seat of intelligence, in their seat of truth seeing. This is a very clear, clarity driven person. Now, this person is trying to get some real clarity on you, some real truth, some real understanding, and they feel very powerful. They feel very capable. They feel very uh, masterful. There's a lot of divine masculine energy popping up here. And this included is a very divine masculine energy alpha space to be in. And so is our king of wands. Let's hit the fool first because there is a part of them that's feeling like, you know what, maybe I can just throw caution to the wind and, and step into this. Maybe I can just open my arms to this. Maybe I could be vulnerable to this. Maybe I could let this happen. Maybe this is worth stepping into. The Fool is the beginning of the entire journey of all of the cards. This is the beginning of something very special. And there is a special space right now between you and this person that is very special and open. It is the beginning of a journey. It could be the beginning of a journey. And there's a lot of promise. It could fall apart, could fall off the cliff, you could get hurt, you could get vulnerable, you could be naive, but also it could be the greatest adventure of your life. So there's uh, there are a lot of thoughts rolling around in there and that's probably what's been keeping them up at night. Um, now we also have the King of Wands. The King of Wands again with that fire energy, like our Knight of Wands that wants to kind of rush in and wants to you know, all that fiery, spicy, yummy, physical attraction. There's also this seat of, of feeling like in your eyes, they feel like their best self. They feel like they could reach their fullest potential. They feel like they are being seen in the best light. They feel like they are being seen as them, their best self and they want to live up to that expectation. They feel this real growth, this need to grow and to be better and to show you that they are who you think they are, that they do show up in the world that way. There's a part of them that really wants to respond to this feeling they get of how they think you feel about them. And again, with the fire energy, there's still a lot of passion here. There's still a, a real seed of power. This also is a very unstoppable card. It's a very moving forward, no obstacles in the way. I'm not going to stop until I, I, I'm just not going to stop. You know, like I am going to move forward. And this is a very, again, divine masculine card, some real divine masculine energy, some alpha male energy really coming through with this person. 
and they do have a real capability. They're super capable. They're able to take control of situations and things, and they're, they're really able to be in this very sort of dominant space, which also tells me that it's possible they really want to be the, uh, you know, like the instigator and the propeller forward, and there's a, a potential for them to really want to be the driver here. Now we also have the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Cups really, uh, uh, cards of completion get into our, our tens. The Ten of Cups uh, is balancing our, our Ten of Pentacles. Both of these are extremely positive cards and extremely positive Ten cards. And they both have a very similar feeling. This feeling that you could have this long term, they feel very generous towards you, they have all this, you know, but they also got that feeling of like, there could be long term potential here. And there is that feeling here too, this could be the thing. And they think about you in a much bigger way than just the immediacy of the moment, the immediacy of the physical attraction. They think about you as this could be my person. This could be my destiny. This could be my soulmate. This could be my future. This could be my family um, and whatever that family looks like, but this could be my home thinking of you. Like you could end up being their home. There is potential. They feel the potential, the incredible amount of potential that, that really lies with you. Ooh, I love this. Okay, let's ask some specific questions. So I would like to know, we do have this, this back and forth. We do have this two of pentacles. So what is it that's, um, that's going back and forth? What are their secret fears about you moving forward with you? What are their secret fears about moving forward? We have the ace of pentacles and the aces and I, you know, anytime I'm going to say anything that I'm a little nervous about saying, I'm just going to tell it the way the cards are coming in and I'm going to tell it the way that it comes to my mind first, even if that doesn't feel as good, but, but the aces are new opportunities and this feels like they might be afraid that they're going to miss a new opportunity. They might miss a new opportunity with someone else. They might miss a new opportunity that could be work related, but this feels like, like they uh, aren't ready to maybe like settle in and commit because they're, you know, still sort of seeing what's shiny and new out there, which doesn't feel good. I don't like saying that it doesn't feel good to me. And that doesn't feel like a good reason. But also, you know, this can be a little bit of a tenuous situation. They don't know your full package yet. And maybe there are other blocks here that are putting them into a different space. So let's pull another card in that vein. I would like to also know what they are afraid of when thinking of you, afraid of moving forward with you. What is, okay, um, what is, um, Ah, five of swords coming in. So I'm also feeling like there, and I don't know if this is stemming from an interaction that you've had together, or if this is stemming from a past relationship they've had, but they are afraid of um, being hurt. I mean, the five of swords really gets into, it's kind of a brutal card. It's really feeling like they can't take it if, if you tear them down, if they got ghosted, if they got, if you said something that really, you know, there's a part that's, that's very vulnerable and it is, it, it, this is a very cold and brutal card. And I don't know that this is pulling from anything that you've done whatsoever. This could just be pulling in from past experiences with someone else, but there is a part of them that's very afraid of getting crushed of getting decimated. And I'm using big bad words because that is what that feels like. This is a big bad card. This is, you know, like, you know, it feels awful. And when I say the word brutal, that's really what I mean, brutal. Like it's not just like, oh, I'm afraid I'm gonna fall down and hit my knee. It's like, I'm afraid of getting a sword in my stomach. I am afraid that I won't be able to recover. Um, which is worth staying up at night about. And that might be some healing that needs to happen on their end. Let's find out. Let's ask the cards. So I would like to ask, I'd like to know, I'd like to know 
Um, what blocks are popping up for this person? Are there past things we need to know about? Is there something coming in? What do we need to know about these fears? Why they're coming up for this person? Mm -hmm. So first of all, we have the Page of Pentacles. Now, the pages are youthful messenger cards and uh, often very, often very positive. Um, so I feel like something has come through for them before that felt really positive. It had that same sort of, you know, foolish feeling of being really open to something, deciding something was really valuable, being excited about it, and, and then that not turning out to be so. Um, so that feeling like something is good, which means they're feeling good things about you and they feel like it could be really valuable, it could be really good, which we do know we're getting those, we're getting lots of positive things coming in, but, but they've had that before where they've had those positive things coming in and that hope before and that sort of youthful hope, which can be, you know, can be really crushed. You know, there's a vulnerability to that. And I'm, I'm keeping that question open, so we're not closing that question down yet. Let's keep on going with that. I want to know about these blocks, about things that might have... And the Four of Swords. Now, the Four of Swords is a resting card. It's, um, it, you know, resting the mind, letting things relax, letting things settle. So perhaps they have promised themselves that they would take time away from dating or take time away from romance or let their heart rest, let themselves, I mean, they might have even, you know, told themselves they would just not take anything seriously. They would not get into a big relationship. They would just sort of play the field or something. But there's a part of them that sort of decided somewhere mentally that they were going to rest, that they were going to recover and they were going to heal. And perhaps that that hasn't, you know, all happened yet for them. And perhaps they want to actually move things into a bigger space and they're getting those feelings of like, oh, this could be a long-term thing. And that's sort of making them, you know, sort of like scooch back and shy away because they, they were like, well, this is what you really need, but this is what you should be doing. Should, 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 you know, sometimes we're in a, in a place that's, that's not where we've decided to be. Um, okay, I would like to ask the cards another question. So I would like to know about moving forward with this person. So is there potential for moving forward now with this person? Is there, is there anything that we really need to know? Is there, uh, how open is this? Is there going to be a green light here in the near future? I know we have some blocks that need to be handled and that's, ultimately up to them to handle but let's find out what the cards have to say about that about the energy around this um <clears throat> the two of wands this this feels like a yes to me this feels like a the two of wands is this adventuring card this is traveling card it's this you know it, it's something new it's something stepping into something new it's uh you know they have the bravery and the courage to do it and um, and yes, I think that there is potential here and it, it, it is like a soft yes, you know, so it's not going to feel like that fiery, you know, that, that fiery, like let's move forward. Let's, you know, it's going to feel like, okay, here we go. Let's try this out. Um, but there's potential, there is potential, there's potential. Ugh. I want to pull one more card with that question, just in case we get any new answers, if we get something um, important coming through. Okay, um, we have the Seven of Swords. So it feels like we're, we are being told that it could go either way. <laughs> this could move forward. There is potential for this to adventure forward. And there also is potential for, you know, this person to really just take up all your thought space and sort of run away with it. And, um, you know, just kind of maybe decide to be in the space that they're going to play the field or they're going to, you know, whatever, and kind of just decide that they're going to, you know, playfully not take things seriously. So there is a chance for both things, which makes sense because they're in this juggling act. There's the back and forth. When you have blocks involved, there is always that potential that things could go either way. 
Now I do want to ask uh, one more question um, before we're going to switch decks here in just a second. But I do want to ask one more question while we're here and while we're pulling cards about this person. So I would like to know a little bit about this, this brutality, about this fear of getting hurt. And I would like to know a little bit more about why they're resting, why they decided they needed to rest, why they're, you know, there's that kind of like back and forth. I want to know a little bit more about the cause of that. Is it a person? Is it a event? Is it what, what happened? I'd just like to know a little bit more if we can get that information. Let's see what we get. Um, okay, we have the Knight of Pentacles reversed, which feels like there was a failure, a failure to be the person that they wanted to be. And they wanted to be, uh, I feel a little emotional wave here as I say this, um, this, they wanted to be this consistent, showing up, brave, um, being the person who provides, who is uh, reliable, who is giving and so generous. And so, you know, that there was a part of them that, that had this expectation of being this type of person they wanted to be. And they feel like they failed that that they did not live up to that expectation, that they were not the fullest version of themselves and they don't trust themselves. This person is in a place where he doesn't really trust himself right now. He doesn't trust that he's capable of being the person, even though you know, you're making him feel like this beautiful person, this incredible divine masculine energy in the way that you see him. And But there's a part of him that doesn't believe it. There's a part of him that knows that's happened before and he has failed out on that he didn't show up the way he wanted to in the world he made mistakes he wasn't as consistent as he wanted to be he didn't see the value that needed to be seen he he wasn't showing up the way he wanted to show up okay and i'm pulling one more card with the same question and we have another reversed card my goodness and we have the Queen of Wands reversed. So I think the person he was with as well at that time, they both weren't showing up the way they wanted to be. They weren't, they both weren't who they could be. They weren't re meeting their potential. There is a possibility that he doesn't trust himself now because of what happened here in this failure, this feeling of failure. But it's hard to not fail if it's not the right person and they're not in their right space either. So, you know, grains of salt. But this person that he was with, he thought she was one thing and, and she wasn't. She wasn't that person and she wasn't able to live up to that expectation of, uh, of the attributes that he had given to her. And, you know... It, he put her in a queen of wands energy and that, you know, fierce, passionate, purposeful, moving forward, positive, you know, lots of great attributes, growth oriented, fiery, and it just, she wasn't in her seat of power and she wasn't, uh, she wasn't who he thought that she was and she wasn't able to live up to her own expectations or his expectations either. Okay. <sighs> Clearing off that energy, I am going to grab our pink deck for you. Now we're taking a look at your energy. Let's see what the cards have to say about you. Let's take a look. So I want you to go ahead, uh, relax yourself. You can even open yourself into a receiving position, open your hands into a receiving position and let yourself just open up the space between your eyebrows. Also, if you love content like this um, and you're loving this reading, go ahead and subscribe now if you haven't already. It means so much to me when we get new subscribers. So please do that. I would love that if you did. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first I wanna know just about anything that you need to know about this person. Anything that's important for you to know about this person and your interactions with this person. 
So there is something secret that's popping up. The moon is coming in and the moon has hidden truths, secrets, things that are uncovered. So there is something that that is that is hidden here, um, which is telling me there's something that's not popping up in this spread that we're not getting. There's some other piece of information. Let's go ahead and see what else you need to know about this person. And that also is telling me that there are parts of them that just really aren't going to show in any interactions that you're having. Now we also have the Page of Cups. So this can be playful, this can be fun. Again, messenger cards, youthful messenger cards. This is, this is a playful feeling emotional card, but it's a lot of playfulness. It's a lot of, uh, you can have a lot of laughter, you can enjoy yourselves, you can have that kind of playful spirit and attitude. And that also is an encouragement to approach this with a playful spirit. Go in not thinking too seriously about it. Go in thinking in that, you know, just playful sort of flirtatious with life kind of way that you don't have to, you don't have to take this at all seriously. You can go into this and probably the best way to approach it is to go in with a very playful attitude. Let things be funny and fun and just kind of enjoy yourself and enjoy the adventure of it. We're staying with that question for right now. So here's a card. So we have our third 10 card of the day. Um, and this is a very different card from our 10 of cups and our 10 of pentacles. Uh, this is the 10 of swords. And the swords, again, getting into that thought space and mind space. And um, this card is the way it looks. You know, this is a sort of very laid out kind of space. And this makes me feel that this, the way that things can progress here could leave you feeling like you have been taken advantage of, that you could end up feeling like you were, uh, sometimes this comes up as like feeling like stabs in the back almost, that like you weren't aware of all the information and let yourself get to a space, not just let yourself, but that you were taken to a space that really laid you out, could really take you to a space where you feel like, 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 wow, I need a break. I don't think I can process all of this. I don't think I can handle things. I'm feeling very, you know, this is very, long fall splat <laughs> with a bunch of swords in the back. That is how that could end up feeling. So there is potential here for you to get hurt. There is potential for you to get hurt with anyone, you know, and sometimes that's the risk we have to take. So that is showing up here in this spread though. So that is something I want you to take to heart and something that's worth deciding if this person is worth being playful going into it, that you might never get to know the, the, the deepest part of the secret or these secrets that they might withhold. Um, and that might end up, you know, sort of torturing you and leaving you at a place where you aren't really ready to move on. You're not ready to like be open to other things. Let's see what else we're getting for this person. So we're also getting the six of wands and the wands is the, the, you know, that fiery energy again. The six of wands is a very victorious card. And I do feel like we're getting some, some, some very, you know, this can really go two very different ways. This is a very two path. This is very, you know, and, and unfortunately you don't get the full choice of how that ends because they're going to have to make their own decisions ultimately and make their choices about going back and forth with their priorities on you or their feelings about you and, and handling their own blocks. And there's a lot to handle here. There is a lot of juicy, good, yummy potential here though too. Um, and it could end victoriously as well. So, you know, the two ends of the spectrum are right here. You could, you know, end up in a splat <laughs> and you could end up victorious here. This could end up feeling like you're getting the trophy. This is like a winning, you know? 
So um, let's go ahead. I would like to pull some cards. First of all, I want to pull a card. Um, I, I want to call pull a couple cards, I guess. I, I just want to take a look at your love potential generally beyond this person, beyond this crush. Are there other things coming in for you with love? Or what is coming in for you with love? Let's find out what that energy looks like around you. Oh boy, yes. So new opportunities are, are aces and the cups are feelings and emotions. This is new love coming in. There is something really good on the way for you. So while you're progressing here and things are happening here, I would say it is very, with the information we have, it's very important for you to hold your own here because there is new love coming in for you and you don't want to end up in a space where you don't feel like you can get up again because it's on the way in and you want to be available and ready for the overflow. Now that just is mentality shift. That doesn't mean you can't pursue this or follow this path because there is beautiful potential here. This could be the new love coming in. So, you know, just keep that mentality of, it is coming for me. It is on its way. It is beautiful and it is big and I am open to it and I'm, nothing is going to, you know, a little bit of that unstoppable energy. Nothing is going to, to, to pull me off of that path of keeping my hands open and receptive. That is so much easier said than done. So mm, let's continue. I want to keep I want to keep that question open. What's coming in for you with love? Hi, King of Swords. Now this is very interesting, isn't it? So we're pulling from a separate deck, and we pulled the King of Swords over here in in his spread, and this is a space that he is really taking up, uh, and uh, so there is some real potential here for this being what's coming in for you with love. But this could also be uh, another person that has that clarity. Those things that you find attractive about him, those are the things that your person is going to be bringing in as well. So either it's in him, but those same characteristics could also be in someone else, that feeling of like knowing and truth seeing and clarity and sitting in this beautiful divine masculine seat of power and this kind of alpha maleness. And that energy is aligned with your energy. And that is, you know, on its way in for you. And that could be right here. Let's continue. Okay. So we also have the hermit. So this person that is coming in, I'm feeling this is outside energy, is uh, is also a little bit, I would say a little bit of an introvert, but, but also just a little bit of keeping some precious information to themselves, seeing their own interior world and not being an important part of who they are, that they you know, they aren't all, they're not an open book. It's not going to be so easy to read them. It is going to be a little difficult to read them. They're not going to crack it all open for you. Some of it's going to be in their own space, in their own world, and they might be holding some of that back, shining that interior light in, inside of themselves. Okay, and I want one more card for this about what's coming in for you with love. Hi, the fool. Very interesting. Once again, we are pulling a duplicate card here. And that is the beginning of the journey. This, this is interesting. I'm feeling an interesting uh, mix here of this having some really good potential. And also, even if it weren't this person, opening your arms to this, letting yourself, you have a whole new adventure awaiting you regardless. And I know it's hard to keep yourself open to, to come what comes, you know, just being like, Hey, my job is to stay open 
My job is to stay open. My job is to stay open with this person, move forward, but feel it out and stay open, stay open, stay open because here it is, this is open. It is beautiful. It's stepping out into the adventure and the, you know, the adventure is the beginning of everything. This is stepping into the beginning of everything. New things are coming in for you. This is a new adventure that awaits you and it's beautiful and wonderful and has, you know, the potential for all the things. It does have the potential to step off the cliff and go splat, but also it has the potential for everything you desire. It's, uh, it's beautiful stepping into life. And I want you to let yourself feel really alive as you work your way through your daily activities, as you do everything right now. Let yourself just sit into the feeling of, I am alive. I am seeing everything for the first time. I'm hearing the birds. I'm smelling the fresh cut grass. I am, I feel the sunshine on my face. I'm, you know, at one with my, with my spiritual practice. I'm open. I am open. I am open. Oh, Oh my goodness. All right, I wanna pull a few more cards for you. So I would like to take a look at your blocks. What is blocking you? What could be blocking you? What could keep this from moving forward in your energy field? I wanna see what comes up for, what comes up for that. Mm. Okay, I'm feeling these two. Here we are, ah, again with the duplicate cards. Here we are at the Ten of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, well, this is very interesting. So, the Ten of Pent, uh, the Ten of the Ten of Cups is popping up. The Knight of Pentacles is popping up as blocks for you, potential blocks for you. And this is so fascinating because this person has, this person has failed in this way. We know that already, that they have not met their own expectations for being this type of person. And it's possible, you know, who knows that they just are not this type of person. They are you know, king of wands type of person. They are king of swords type of person. They are knight of wands person where, you know, they they can get fiery and romantic and physical and, you know, clear and thought provoking and, and, and dominant and uh, just lots of juicy, wonderful qualities. But them showing up in a reliable, systematic way might not be them. And they might give that appearance. That might be part of their, you know, of why they sort of failed to follow through there is that they had an expectation in the beginning that they were going to be this type of person who is just, you know, very reliable and maybe a little bit uh, under the radar, but super consistent and showing up and uh, and very generous and very giving in a soft way a beautiful wonderful incredible qualities but it might just not be them um now also the ten of cups is popping up here so they have been getting that feeling that like this could be the thing now if you are also getting this feeling like you know what this could be the thing I would be careful about the expectation of what this is going to be. If you start walking forward with this person and they come back to this four of swords space where they're like, I said I was going to not get into another relationship right away. I need to rest. Secretly afraid of getting the, the brutal attacks, the going back and forth um, where, you know, they could... They, they obviously have a lot of attraction for you. They have a, they do have these feelings. They do see the potential. 
but it's important that you keep the expectation of that potential, which you might very well have as well. Keep it to a space where you're still open that like this is coming in for you, no matter what. It doesn't mean it's coming in for you with this person because this person has to decide that they are not going to go back and forth, that they're going to handle their blocks, that they're going to be ready to move forward. And, uh, and love is coming in for you no matter what. And we want you to be open to that. So it's very important that you don't push that expectation too far forward, too heavy into your energy field, um, because that could end up acting as a block for you moving forward here. And also it could just be that that mentality or hearing you say it or something like that could make them, you know, do the skitter scatter and like, even though they think it too, but they're not saying it, they, they run back to the, no, 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 but this has got to be casual or this has got to be something else. Or, you know, we can have the physical attraction or, you know, where they, where they go back to their blocks. So these are coming up as, as, um, potential blocks for you. Now, I want to know about potential blocks for you and love generally about this like Ace of Cups opportunity about is if there's anything really specifically in your heart that needs to be handled in order for you to have all that you desire, all the soulmate yumminess. And we have the Ace of Wands reversed. Again, with the new opportunities, the Wands coming in with that fire, energy, passion, purpose, you know, beautiful new things, very exciting. There's a little castle here in the background. So I would really love for you, I would really love for you to evaluate your belief system right now on the abundance of of what is coming in for you. Do you have a deep belief that nothing is coming for you? Is it possible that you have a belief somewhere that no more opportunities exist, perhaps outside of this person or perhaps just in general that like, you know, that you just feel like, yeah, it's lost. It's it's gone. It's not moving to me anymore. It's not giving it to me anymore. It's not handing off that new opportunity for everything I desire and want anymore. I want you to evaluate if there are some hidden secret little beliefs in there that could that can block you from having this and anything. Because that belief will keep you paralyzed and keep you in a space of not being able to be open and openness is kind of the key here i know i keep saying that over and over again but openness is what we're going for this is the the big task for you um and i want to pull one more card with that question before we close that door ah uh, we have the nine of wands coming up as a as a block now, the Nine of Wands is a card where this figure's been hurt. They've got a bandage on their head. They've been, you know, smashed and bonked over the head. But they get back up. And I, if you've been with me and you've been doing readings with me, then you may at some point have heard me say this makes me think of like a Rocky movie. You know, it's that like, oh, I'm really getting put through the ringer and I've been you know, I've been, and maybe because this figure also looks a little bit like Sylvester Stallone and Rocky. <laughs> I don't know. But that feeling of like, I got hit down, but I'm getting back up and I'm back in it. And it's that underdog, you know, I, I'm, I'm back in. Um, and this coming up as a block is telling me that perseverance, the ability to read rebound come back and get back into it that is gonna that's that is the thing if you get bonked over the head and you stay down 
you know, I got really hurt. This person rejected me and now nothing exists for me. There are no opportunities coming in. Nothing else exists that will keep you from love flowing into you. And making that a priority that, you know, and you can tell that to yourself over and over again, it, it hurts are gonna happen. And I am completely committed to when it happens, when I feel rejected, when I feel like I've gotten, you know, sliced and I've gotten, you know, put on the mat and those feelings pop up for me, I am committed to standing back up and getting back in the fight. And it's, just, it's not necessarily, you know, I don't want to say it's like getting into a fight, you know, like you, it doesn't have to feel like kind of like torture. It's going to be joyful and wonderful, but it's that feeling. I'm going back to Rocky, of course, <laughs> but you just getting back up that like, okay, I'm back on it and I'm moving forward again, committing to yourself that you are worth getting back in, that you are worth standing back up, standing back up, standing back up as many times as you have to, as much as you need to. And as soon as you realize you're down, that you're gonna start making your way back up to a standing position and moving forward again. That resilience, that ability to come back from something that hurt a lot, that was very devastating, that you know really crushed your heart for a moment or for a very long time but making your way back up. And let's energetically lift you back up a little bit right now. Ah, 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 ah. Feel yourself really get reinforced for just a moment. Let yourself be reinforced. You are so strong. You are so powerful. You're so capable. You have a divine femininity. You also have some aspects of divine masculinity that will let you tap into all different parts of yourself. And you have this lovely ability to take care of yourself, to nurture yourself, to love yourself. And up you go. And you love yourself so much that you are willing to get back in the ring. You are willing to get back on your path to what you desire for yourself. Mm, mm. <sighs> Exhale. Okay. Oh, my beauty. Okay, I want to pull our anchor card over. We haven't pulled our anchor card over yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our anchor card is. So we've been looking at our crush. That's where we were when we were pulling this card. Uh, and, and let's see what energy comes up here. We have the Empress. Oh, my Empress. Thank you for this card. Um, I, you have this divine femininity. This person sees that, but also it is a true essence of you. You have this sensuality, this ability to see beauty, this ability to grow things around you, this growth ability, this gracefulness about you, that you can interact in the world in an incredibly divine feminine way, that you have this fertility energy and this abundance energy. And that is so fresh and so alive and so far removed from no opportunity ever coming in again. That old belief system that might be tucked away in there. And I don't want to say it definitely is. I want you to dip into your intuition and, and find what is there for you. But, but it is so far removed from things being stagnant or stuck or not moving. This is a flowing river, a beautiful flowing river. It is not stuck. It is not stagnant. It is not the end of the road. This is flourishing. You are flourishing. You are budding and everyone else can see it. This person can see it as well. Whatever happens, they can see it. They know. And that is very attractive to them, to other people, but ultimately to yourself. Mm. <sighs> okay. 
Since openness was our theme, can we go ahead, instead of doing an emoji below, can we write the word open in all caps below as a symbol that, yes, I embrace this. Yes, I hold this. Yes, I am open and I am, I am deserving and worthy and open to receiving the love that is coming in for me. Mm. I lift you up. I send you love. I'm sending you so much light until I get to see your precious self one more time, many more times, all the time, until I get to see you again. Love, Mia. Ah, welcome in my card too. Land and arrive. Be here. Be with me now. This is a fun one. Um, I'm excited to see what we get today. So today we're finding out how your crush feels about you. All the details. We are going to go in depth. We're going to find out all of the things, everything in the energy. And I do want you to get this person in your mind. I want you to see them. I want you to see the way that they walk, talk, their facial expressions, their presence, their essence, their being. Let yourself soak into that just a little bit. Uh, yes. Okay, now we're going to begin. We are going to be pulling from a few different decks today, as I've been doing lately. Um, and we're going to start with this gorgeous gold deck to get information about how your crush feels about you. 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 Yeah, yeah. Let's see what we've got. All right, so we're just landing with that question right now. That's where we're starting. We're starting with that question. How your crush feels about you. Nothing else quite yet. Just getting started right there. Mm-hmm. I know, and I know I'm pulling a lot of cards right away, but I I wanna get I wanna get a nice clear picture of of what's getting us started, what is opening up for you. Um, and let's take a look and see what we've got. Uh-huh. Oh my goodness, we have the two pentacles, which is the first card that I pulled on card one. We have the six of cups, we have the page of pentacles, and we have the hermit reversed. And we have the three of swords, okay. We have the three of cups, two threes right there. We have the magician reversed, and we have temperance. Um, so I'm seeing a lot right away. And maybe you are too. And actually, I would love for this to be a moment where you you know, look into your intuition a little bit. How, when I'm saying these cards, what pops up at you? What do you feel? Do you feel anything right away? Let's go ahead and let's get moving. Uh, so the two of pentacles is telling me that he is, it, it, he's in a little bit of a juggle. He hasn't decided how, how he feels about you exactly. He is, you know, on one side, he sees your value. On the other side, there might be something else that is pulling him. I'm seeing this three of swords right here that's tagging my eye. I'm also seeing the hermit reverse and I'm seeing the magician reverse. These things are popping up to me and even temperance. So uh, so the two of pentacles is, is telling me that, that there is a little seesaw action going on. There is a little bit of back and forth. It's not a complete solid green light yet at this point. Um, but this person does feel familiar. You feel familiar to them. Uh, there is something about you that feels like they've known you for a long time. You feel like, like someone that they've known before in the past, in a past life that you've known. Um, maybe you remind them of somebody from childhood even. There's something that feels young and that feels, and I always say outside sounds amplify the message and a, a big car muffler just went by. And, uh, and, and I'm feeling that there is, there's a part of you that just feels like, like, uh, yeah, we share something. We're a similar person. We have a similar way of being. And there's something very lovely about that to them, that they really have a lot of tenderness, um, for that feeling, but also a great relief for that feeling. It's like you're dealing in a known quantity and and you know regardless of where you are in this process you may not even really know them very well yet um and and they still feel that way there's still something that's just like yeah this is a, this is one of my people this is part of my this is part of my my group my um my people who are like me 
Uh, we have the Page of Pentacles popping up. The pages are youthful messenger cards. And um, this card popping in makes me feel like there is something he wants to say. There is something that he wants to relate to. There's a message he wants to give. There's something that he's hoping to, you know, bring value to you with. Um, whether that's, you know, taking things to, you know, doing something about something or spending more time or, you know, if, even if it's like a first date or if you perhaps have been, you know, dating, then, you know, maybe adding in a little bit more, something that might be a little bit of an up level. But there is something there that he wants to connect with you more. And he's excited about it. It's fun. It feels valuable. It feels, uh, you know, the pentacles can often get into to money and material goods and the, and the world, worldly things, but, but also I'm feeling this very much in a value way, that there's something that that he values about you and that he wants to communicate with you. He wants to share with you and he wants to relay a message and to make an offer about something, to take you somewhere, to do something. There's something to that. Now the Hermit Reverse is popping up here and this tells me that he has been coming out of a space of being kind of isolated. So he has been coming out of a space and this is gonna turn around, but it's not turned around yet. He is still in this space. He's still very much in the space of being a little closed off, a little insular, shining a light inward, trying to do some self-reflection, figuring out some answers for himself. There's something about this space that hasn't released him back into the world and maybe he just doesn't have the momentum to feel like super comfortable to run out into the world. So if there is some awkwardness around inter interactions, it's probably just he's not super used to it again. And it doesn't mean that he's not good with people. He might be great with people, but when you get romance involved, there is something that's contained. There is something that's a little closed off and a little shielded and a little precious and self-reflective and really, you know, taking time to figure out himself and his world and, you know, what's going on there. And we see why, because we have the three of swords popping up. There's a heartbreak in him right now. There's something that he has come from that has broken his heart and he's in recovery mode. And it, this is just, you know, and, and maybe he's not even to recovery mode yet. Although he will be coming out of this hermit space and you know, that, that takes time, but, but that will be happening. So recovery will happen, but there is a part of him that's very broken. And this might be a part that you don't get to see reflected in his being. This You may not project this to the world. It might not look like he's sad. It might not look like there is something deep inside that sort of, you know, sliced him straight through the heart. But there was. Um, and we also have, so we have our two threes right next to each other. And I do feel some connectedness here. So I'm also sort of feeling like perhaps this person feels like they should be getting out into the world again. Like perhaps their ex is now dating again, having fun again, posting on social media again, sort of shoving it in his face a little bit, or maybe it's not for him at all, but just sort of showing it to the world a bit. Um, and there's some feeling of like, I should, I should be having fun. I should be enjoying myself. I should be out having drinks with friends and going to dinners and I should be participating in the world. And I feel very much that you, in this aspect, he feels like you could fit into that, that like, yeah, you are the type of person that knows how to live life well, that can have fun, that is vibrant and alive, and that I would want to participate in those things with. Okay, continuing on. We have the Magician Reverse and we have Temperance. Now, this is also telling me two things. So, so this person, so far, what we have coming through are, you know, this is a tricky little situation. This isn't a, a very clear, this person's been in a rough place to really be in tune with you, to be in tune with the world. If they're not encouraging you, if you don't feel like they're moving forward, that's why. And it makes sense. This this energy is not a fast moving energy. This isn't even a forward moving energy yet. This is really just kind of like, I want to talk to you. You know, I want to ask you something. I want to, you know, reach out and you, you feel comfy and familiar, but, but 
but there are a lot of things that are blocking up this channel right now. There are a lot of things that are keeping him back, holding him back, not letting him like run and race free. Now the magician reverse tells me that this person does have a real confidence because they are assured of success most of the time. But coming out of this space, they are not that person right now. You're not seeing them at their fullest potential. They're not thriving and, you know, I got that and I got that and I can, you know, oh, I, I you know, I want it, I got it. And winning people over and manifesting everything that they desire. This heartbreak really like put a stop to that. That was like a tire blowout on the highway. They can't go anywhere right now and they are not manifesting anything right now. They're in a very stuck position and they're really just ruminating on an interior level over what has happened, what has gone wrong, what has, you know, and, uh, you know, trying to do that self-reflecting, but it's not really leading to the growth that, that they want to be having. It's just kind of stagnant, just kind of stuck, just kind of pulled back and pulled into themselves. So they do have this energy. They have a great capability. They have real potential as a human being to be excellent and probably are most of the time. And you can probably see that on them, um, just, you know, from their being, but also from, you know, any kind of, you know, uh, you know, little trail that they've left behind of successes. But that's not happening for them right now. They are not in that space. So that also makes it hard for them to feel like there's any kind of assured success in reaching out to you and making something happen and moving forward. They're not their normal, confident, able, capable self. Now, temperance is also popping up here, and this feels like it has two messages from me uh, or for me, but two messages for you that are channeling through me. Um, so the two messages that are coming through or A, let yourself be really balanced with this. Don't go in really hot and heavy and, um, you know, let yourself be really balanced about it because this person kind of requires that. It's just sort of like a tip from the cards, like, hey, you know, this isn't, this isn't gonna go hot and heavy. And if you come in hot and heavy, it's this, this, this person's just gonna, you know, hermit crab right back into their shell. Now, the other thing that this is telling me is that they might be having some issues with temperance themselves. They might be having some issues with um, being balanced in their life. And this could be just sort of general balances that they're like, you know, not getting enough sleep. They're, you know, thinking too much, you know, stuff like that, spending too much time alone. Um, but also, I am really feeling like it could also swing to is some sort of outlet for them to not think about, you know, what's happened. And, you know, that could get into drinking too much or eating too much or too many, you know, if they were a gamer doing, you know, doing that too much or, you know, even like binge watching shows or just kind of really leaning into sort of numbing behaviors. So there's something there that's out of balance for them. Let's continue on. I want to pull some more cards for this person. So you obviously, you have a crush on this person. And um, and this person, uh, let's find out about, about this journey. What does this mean for the two of you? Uh, is there space to, to move forward? Can they do that healing in, um, in an amount of time in which you'll actually wait for it? Should you wait for it? What does that look like? So I just want to look at the two of you together and, and what messages are coming through. Is this person worth, you know, letting them do this healing journey? So we have a page of swords coming in. Again, our pages, messenger cards, these youthful messenger cards. This is a, um, you know, coming in with, with the swords energy, which gets into that clarity and truth and intelligence and thought space. And I feel like what strikes me is that you've had a good idea recently. You've had some sort of thought process recently. And whatever that was, that idea about this person, a moment of truth and clarity about this person, that, that is 
a, a download for you that is coming in for you and that is something you should pay heed to so i want you to notice anything that you've thought of recently where you were like oh that feels like that feels like a whammy of truth you know that kind of feeling where you're like i can feel that in his presence i can you know i can read this off of him by the way that we interacted here that piece of body language told me this I want you to anchor into that piece of information, whatever that was. I want you to let yourself anchor into that. All right, we're still looking at the two of you and I'm not asking any new questions yet. We're sitting into this question. So this is interesting, I'm pulling the Nine of Pentacles. So uh, the Nine of Pentacles is a very luxurious card, things coming, coming in, uh, obviously very feminine, a very feminine card. And I am feeling like, you have this decadent glow. Now, I really believe all these messages that pop up are, they're coming in for a reason. This, so they're important, even if they seem small and sometimes they don't, they don't feel like they're delivering a huge message. Um, and, and that's okay because something about it is important. So it's important for us to take heed of it. And I sort of feel like that right now with this, with the nine of pentacles. This feels like it's important for you to know about your glow, that you glow, that you radiate, that you have this abundance all around you. You have an incredible wealth all around you. You're an incredible value add everywhere you go. And people can feel it. He can see it. He can feel it. It is not a secret. And maybe sometimes you doubt it. And maybe sometimes you don't see it. And even your physical beauty, like really just getting into like, you know, the bones of being physically beautiful or pentacles do get into physical, you know, the physical body as well, you know, are feeling beautiful in this world. This is a gorgeous card. You are gorgeous. And if there, if you felt like you needed to hear that, or maybe you doubt yourself sometimes, or, you know, you know, maybe you doubt that this person is attracted to you or or sees your physical beauty it is extremely obvious extremely obvious that is not something so that's just something that's coming in um and let's continue on i want to know more about the two of you what we need to know the king of wands is popping up here now i love this coming in because this person isn't having a lot of ferocious energy. We do have the magician here where when they sit into their power, that's a master manifester card. You know, that is a powerhouse card. And so they do have the potential for it, but but really they're not sitting into it. Now, the, the king of wands also tells me that, yes, they have this, this uh, you know, master manifester in their corner, on other times, but they also have this riding undercurrent of serious divine masculine energy, which I I love to see this coming through. And as a message for the two of you, they will overcome. They will move forward. They have a thread that runs through them that is so strong, so grounded, so powerful, they they'll never be on hold forever they will never get hit down and just decide not to get back up again that's not who they are that's not a part of their inner being their inner being is unstoppable their inner being does not get waylaid by obstacles yes you can fall yes you can be hurt but that is not a permanent state of being that is going to change and this wave is going to move forward and they have a very good core. The core of who they are is very, very fiery, very passionate, very motivated. It's a, it's a yummy, yummy energy, uh, which would serve you well. Now we also have the five of swords and the five of swords popping in here you know, really what this feels like to me is this kind of warning that getting into, you move into a relationship here and along the way, it will be tricky because this person is going to have a lot of triggers about being so hurt in the past, being brutalized. There are, you are going to feel like you're walking on eggshells sometimes. 
because all of a sudden you might do something and this person thinks you're being horrible or terrible or, you know, like there might just be a lot of pockets that you have to really, you know, leap around and things that you have to avoid and swing through. And, and I think that's also for, for me, it also very much feels like a warning to not move too fast here. Not that this person's like ready to move fast, but if they were, or if you wanted to try to push it to be that, I do think that they do need some healing time. They need to turn some of this around for themselves. Otherwise, you know, it might blow itself up, but also it wouldn't be wonderful for you. You don't have anything to do with that. That would not actually be your fault at all. You know, that would just be a, uh, you know, accidental, triggers just oh whoops I stepped on a landmine okay you know what do I do about that that would be very tricky that would be very tricky I'm pulling one more for the two of you together and then I'm going to ask some other questions so we have the uh we have the nine of cups the nine of cups coming in and really I get this feeling that that it is all coming and you in the next, it feels very immediate, but very soon you are going to feel like I really have it all, don't I? It really all is here, isn't it? So regardless of, you know, of, uh, of anything else, there are going to be moments where you realize like whatever validation you might need from this person or might want from this person cracking this open to all other love as well that like there might be little pieces of things that you do need on your journey you know to understand your worth to understand your beauty to understand your and as you walk through this there is something coming up very soon where you know whether this ends up being big soulmate territory or you know something that ends up not really moving forward and they need to do their healing, either way, you are going to feel like, oh yeah, yeah, I've got it. And I think it's because of what's happening here, um, that there's something happening here or something happening in the steps moving forward where you will have some sort of understanding and truth of, of your incredible wealth that you are filled up, you're getting everything you want. As genie in a bottle territory, you know, like you got it. You wanted it, you got it. Your desires are all coming to you. That's, you're, you're topped up, it's good. There's nothing that you are ever gonna really need for. You really have everything you need, uh, which I love to, love to say and love to hear. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so what else shall we ask? I am feeling like I'd like to know Boy, about this person, I would like to know, uh, I would like to know about any secret thoughts that they have about you. If there are any secret thoughts that they have about you that they don't really, um, they don't really project and that, okay, King of Swords coming in. And the King of Swords is coming in. This feels like, yeah, like you see them is smart, intelligent, fierce, that, you know, they have this ivory truth, this divine masculine See, You see them in this very powerful way and they feel that. And the secret feels like it, it, it's, you know, maybe they don't totally own it. it. That might not be completely them. No, they might be really more in this king of wands territory and their magician territory. And this kind of like, this kind of other masculine energy might not be theirs. Um, but they might not want to ever tell you that. They might want to live up to your expectation. And also they might really enjoy being, you know, projected upon in this way. And that might feel really good to them. But there is some, there is something there. Uh, let's see what else we have about anything Okay, and the Eight of Wands. Now this is interesting. So the Eight of Wands coming in, and 
this tells me that the eight of wands is very fast moving. It is a lean in, lean in and let go. And it tells me that, that they really do have an impulse and you, they probably will never say it because they're not actually willing to move on it. I don't feel like they're willing to move on it. This energy doesn't feel like that kind of flow, but it might get there. You know, that might just take a little foundational time. This is, we're back in our, his wands territory, you know? Now, this is telling me that he does think about that. He thinks like, hey, I could just lean in and let go. This could be it. I don't have to struggle with this. I don't have to go back and forth. I could just lean in and let go and move fast. And there might have been moments, even regardless of where you are in any interactions with this person, there might have been moments already where, where he's had moments where he's been like, I, I, I could love this person. I could just let go and love this person. But there's so much resistance in this reading that I imagine if they if they really if if they were really tempted to do it, that might be the kind of thing where they might cut off communication. I mean, that might be the kind of thing where they do like a huge backup, 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 because it, I don't think they're ready to do that. I think that there's, you know, there is some tricky stuff going on in here, and they do not feel ready to lean in and let go. But that impulse has certainly come up, and I've in their thought process, there's definitely been some moments where they've just like the way that you look and who you are and the way you move, that it feels like that could, what if, you know, what if this were just fast and easy and lean in and let go? Okay, now I am pulling one more card here before I switch to the pink deck um, where we're gonna ask some different questions. So here, my last card on our gold deck. Really, I would just like to ask for guidance for anything we don't know to ask. If there's something very important here that we need to know, I almost lost the whole deck, but I didn't. And this beautiful deck gave us the moon. <laughs> I feel like this is a little comedic moment from our deck because we said anything that we don't know that we really need to know. And the deck says, oh yeah, there are things you don't know. <laughs> this deck is like, haha, inside joke. <laughs> okay, uh, all of that aside, the moon comes up and it tells us it, there are secrets. There is hidden truth. There is something you are not getting. There is something you are not receiving. And there is something that will probably be withheld from you for a long time. Uh, and it's going to be unclear unless they decide to uncover it for you. But basically when we ask, what do we need to know that we don't know? The cards say, sorry, you don't know and you're not gonna know. And there we are. So so I guess that's, that's that. We're not gonna know, at least right now. And remember, these are paths in the moment, so that could change tonight or tomorrow morning. We could get more answers. But for right now, there are secrets that we don't get answers to, and they, they're locked deep within him. So... Okay, forgive me a little bit if things have shifted because I bumped the table and had to resort a little bit, but we are back. So I'm asking about you now. I want to get into you. I want to get into your nooks and crannies. What do we need to know about you? So first of all, I am asking about you and this person because I want to see how this person's energy will affect you. What does this look like for you? What does this mean to you? How is this going to be for you? Okay, so first of all, I have the Five of Cups. Oh, that's interesting. This is not what I was expecting. So the Five of Cups is a card that says, hey, you're looking at what you've lost and you're not seeing what you have. 
And it's possible that starting to walk into this with this person who is very much still in this healing process, going through all this stuff, this might make you return to an old love. And I don't mean return to them, but just return to the memory to do that thing where you think, oh, remember this person and how they acted. That's what I want. Remember this good thing that happened. You know, that's gone to me now. That's what I want. And instead of really being in, in this as this moves forward, sort of reverting back to the past of what you liked in the past, probably also forgetting, you know, the things that were difficult in the past that took to get there. But there is something, um, there is something beautiful that already exists for you. Okay, um, I want to stay with that question. I want to open that question up. I want to keep it open. Um, oh boy, yeah. So we also have the Nine of Swords, which is that, you know, that card, I can't sleep. I keep thinking. I'm just going over this in my mind over and over again. And uh, that kind of anxious thought space, getting to that sword space. So, so walking this path with this person, this could be really challenging for you. This could be really tricky. It could be very difficult for you just to stay open to what is, to not want to push things forward, to be okay with them pulling away and them being in their own space where they're still doing that healing. This could be very challenging for you to, to handle, to cope with, to feel like you don't have to ruminate on every little thing. It might turn into that sort of thought game where you're just evaluating every single little thing and in every interaction and trying to figure things out, but not really getting down to getting down to anything feeling like it is figured out. Okay. I'm staying in this question. We're holding this question for just a second because I want to see what lies here with this person for you. And we also have the Queen of Swords and I find this very interesting. Now, in this Queen of Swords energy, remember we're, we've you know got this sort of King of Swords energy over here that perhaps you've decided sort of put on them. Uh, there's a part of them that you might feel aligned with. Not only aligned with, and that... Uh, and I, I'm going to say this the way I'm seeing it. I always say that right before I say something that you might not like to hear, but you might be seeing part of them that is something you've projected upon them that feels more in alignment with you than it really is. Because remember going back to that King of Swords, you know, that maybe they're more in that, you know, like King of Wands area, that magician area that that might not really be something that they're they're holding and you might feel like yeah we're in alignment this way or i really like those characteristics about him because these are characteristics about me i have clarity i have truth i have this seat of intellectual power i have this way of viewing the world all of these things that might feel like they're familiar with him but but really it's really just a projection of you, that it's something you hold and you own. I'm staying this question for one more card. Now, um, let's see what we've got. Okay. <laughs> hoi, hoi, hoi. Okay, so here we have the Nine of Cups over here. Remember this little hiding out Nine of Cups? This is Nine of Cups reversed. So... As we pulled the energy here, there is this feeling that you could get to this space where you feel like, I have it all. I have it all. I have the potential for it all. Here it all comes to me. Look, it overflows for me. And, and this is also saying that there's a flip side to this. Walking into this, reading it the way the cards are coming out, walking into this, could it, you can have this, this moment of feeling like it's all coming in for you, but at some point that feels like it's going to turn around to feeling like you don't have anything, to feeling like nothing is coming to you, that you don't have it all, that there is no, you know, divine magnetism, that genie in a bottle kind of feeling, but feeling like it, it's all stalled, it won't come, it won't all come together 
But let's find out more about that. Let's find out more about why that is. So first of all, I want to ask about I want to ask about any blocks you might have. Now, I want to ask about blocks you might have for love generally. Um, so any blocks you might have for love generally. Okay, so this doesn't have to specifically be for this person. Oh, wow, that's interesting. We have the King of Pentacles. This is very interesting. I feel... Now, this is what I'm feeling coming in, and I'm not feeling this as a past person. There might be a past love that you have that is acting as a block, returning to a past thing, but I am feeling this as a love coming in. I am feeling like something is coming towards you, and at least in these cards right, right now, here like this, it feels like it is not this person. And then that's going to act as a block because you're meant for someone else. You're meant for something else that is coming in. Something else is like on its way to you and it's consistent. It's good. It's protective. It's growth oriented. This is a person who has that fatherly energy, that real show up energy. They're, they show up. They are the kind of person who is reliable, who's there, who's consistent, loving and caring and nurturing takes care of Everyone else that they love takes care of themselves, is extremely able and capable. And that's the feeling I got off that card. Okay, I want to keep this question open about blocks. Coming in as a block. We have the Ace of Cups. I am feeling this so much. The Ace is bringing new opportunities. Again, I am not feeling this as a past opportunity or a past thing that is blocking you. I am feeling that something is on its way to you right now. I mean, open your hands to that if you feel that. If you want, you know, if ugh, let yourself be so open to this. If Because just opening yourself up to this, just, just opening yourself up to love and opportunities for love. It doesn't have to not include this person. Um, but there is something coming in that it's meant for you and it's overflowing. It's so good, so good. And that feels like that is coming in as a block. Now dip into your own intuition. If you feel like this is the good thing that's coming in, if you feel like you've got that intuition kicking you, your intuition is sacred and it's important to listen to it. So you should follow those signs. You should follow those feelings. Just, you know, stay stay real with yourself. Stay there with yourself. Now, I am going to pull one more card for a block. Then I want to ask another question about you. So we have the Page of Swords coming in as a block. And this feels like, again, our messenger cards, you know, with the pages. Again, we're pulling a, a second Page of Swords here. Um, the sword's getting into that thought space, that energy space. And this is feeling like something is coming in. <sighs> this is feeling like some kind of clarity is coming in. And I feel like it's coming in the form as our messenger cards, these youthful messenger cards do, as, as, as another person popping up, as a, a message, a sign, a, a, a hint, a something coming in that there is... And it feels like the blocks that are coming up right now for me in this reading feel like really positive things. They're not bad things that you have to clear away. They're just things that are keeping what's not for you from you and keeping what is for you open to you. That doesn't feel bad to me. That feels very good. But again, listen to your own deep intuition. I, you know, I don't want you to you know, kick this to the side and think like, oh, no, but I felt like it was the thing. And you you should just stay open to that and present to that. Okay, now I want to ask about love for you. I want to ask more about this. I want to ask about what's coming in. It doesn't have to be something that's not this person. It could be this person, everything included. It could be this person. It could be 
um, you know, a, a new person, whatever that is and whatever that looks like, I just want to know about love that is showing up in your energy field that's on its way to you, any kind of magnetic um, manifestation informa information that's coming in. Sorry, I was letting my energy but pull these cards and I uh, stopped talking. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hi, hello, son. Well, hello, four of wands. Take a moment, be with this. This is good, I love this. I feel very good about this. Yes, what is coming in for you in love? The sun is radiating positivity. It's warmth, it's happiness, it's good. It is intense, it's powerful. It doesn't back down, it is full force. And let that just sit with you, feeling full force. There's no backing down. There's no pulling away. There are no cloud coverings coming over. There's no, it, it is just absolutely shining steadily, consistently through. I love that. Now, also, we have the Four of Wands, which is such a beautiful card. I mean, this is kind of wedding vibes card. Uh, you know, two people celebrating. You can call this sometimes the 1111 card. Uh, incredible things coming in. This is happy. Things are coming in. There is some real, some real bright days for you coming ahead. Now I do wanna say, as I was saying the sun, and if you feel like you have been getting trapped in any kind of negativity, the opposite feeling of the sun, if you feel like you get trapped in some of, of that opposite feeling where it's hard for you to stay positive about the future, I do want you to take note of that. And I do want you to really let yourself sit in the sun now, regardless of whether the sun is shining on you now, whether that love is shining on you now, whether that person is here with you now. I want you to feel the abundance of that it's gonna help it come faster, so much faster. Just sit into that feeling. Really good things are on the way for you. I'm gonna pull one more card for you, my dear one. I just wanna know anything that we need to know for you, for your heart, for your soul, for your energy, for your abundance, for your mentality, your happiness, for anything that you need to know about you right now that is just gonna be showing up in your energy field. So I'm gonna just, mm, no, nope. yep. Mm, okay, I'm going for one more card. There's something else back here. We have the Seven of Cups and we have the High Priestess. Two important things for you to know. First of all, I guess we should start with first of all, right? First of all, the imaginings that are going on in your mind of the best case scenarios and the worst case scenarios, that's not a place to live right now. That's not your manifestation energy. And I know that it can be, but just sit with the emotion, not the imaginings for your manifestation energy. And I'm not saying that for all the time. I love visualizing. I think it's so important to do, but you might be living too much in your head. You might be living too much in the best case scenario, worst case scenario, and not being present enough, not being in the world, not sitting in the sun. And let just the feeling of the sun take over. That's your job for right now, until you feel called to do otherwise. But for right now, that's where we're being guided, is to sit into the feeling of the sun. Sit into the feeling of that warmth, that power, that unceasing energy, positivity, every good thing. Just a yummy, balmy, sunny summer day. Not too hot, just perfect. You can smell the flowers. Things are good. Things feel warm and happy and cozy. And you feel like anything could happen. Everything could happen. Everything has happened. Everything that you wanted to happen has happened that feeling, just the emotion of that. So be careful 
be careful around there about that, that projection space. Now, my other thing that's coming in is remember, and I really want to curse. <laughs> I want to say, remember who the mm, you are. Remember, and did you hear that horn beep outside far away? I don't know if you did. Maybe you didn't, but I could hear a little horn beep. I would say that it amplifies the message right while I said, while I said this. It bleeped me out. Remember who the F you are. You are in your seat of wisdom. You understand that there is darkness and there is light and you don't cast judgment. You see things clearly as they are. You're wise. You understand that you don't know everything, but you sit in this fertile abundance of growth, knowledge. There is this aura of the magical around you. There is this aura of the mystical around you. There is something absolutely ethereal and magnetic about you. That just people gravitate to you, but it's not just that. It's not just about other people gravitating to you. It's about you sitting into the essence of you and how absolutely extraordinary that is. And it is. You are extraordinary. This is extraordinary. What an incredible adventure you are on being you. It is magnificent curious, hungry, wise, understanding, seeing things, understanding things, feeling things, intuitive, spiritual. It's beautiful. Mm. Well, 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 there is some real divine feminine energy in you, my dear. Um, I love this reading. We are gonna turn over our anchor card. Now I know that this may not have been the reading you were looking for. Um, thank you, first of all, for being with me through all this. <laughs> this is a long reading, I know this, but I hope it holds some insights. Now I know that we were hoping for the lovers and some yummy, yummy, you know, this crushes the person and it's gonna, but you know what, no matter what, no matter what the paths are saying and the energy fields say, I want you to sit into your intuition, see what feels like a confirmation, see what feels like it is like confirming something you already knew. And if it feels like, nah, mm -mm, that energy is different, that's okay too. Your intuition is strong and powerful and hello high priestess energy. Don't deny your own inner knowing. Now, I love this because holy macaroni, what is coming in for you? It is good. It is very good. It's excellent. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to worry about. There is no lack. There is no hunger. There is a hunger for knowledge. There's a hunger for, for growth, but there is no hunger. There's no need. You are, you are just completely overflowing in abundance. It's good. It's very good. Even the blocks here are good. Now, you know, as you get into walking this path, there's possibility of, of these really popping up as some other blocks for this relationship. But, you know, the cards are kind of telling us that that might be for a reason. Now, I do also want to pull over our anchor card. Let's take a look and see what we originally pulled. So we originally pulled the Nine of Wands, which feels like an incredible confirmation of what we've just been through. Now this card, I always, I love calling this the Rocky card because he does look like Rocky Balboa a little bit, right? And the whole premise, you know, of of the Rocky movies, you know, the, the and now I don't know the story. I can't remember which storyline goes with which Rocky. And I, I honestly maybe have seen two of them, but... I know that Rocky gets hit and you're like, oh no, he can't be down forever. And he gets back up. And this is that journey of getting hit and broken and bopped over the head and whoa, we got to heal, but he is standing back up. Now this person has perseverance. We know that. We know that they're not going to be down forever. They're getting back up and getting in. 
but they are not at their full capacity. They are not full king of wands energy. They are in a place of healing and that's okay to honor as well. So just putting that in there. Okay. Ooh, yes. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I would love that. Um, and I really, I want us to go ahead. Can we please pop the sun below? Can we pop the sun emoji below to, to honor this, to accept this, to say, I resonate with this, to say, hey, I am open to the sunshine. I am open to the positivity and the good things that are coming in for me. However they look, that doesn't mean that, you know, that you're saying like, it just is open and receptive and warm and good. It's good. Okay. Now, also, if you would leave me a comment, I would absolutely love that. I read all the comments. I don't comment on all the comments, but I really, they mean so much to me. I love hearing how things hit. I love hearing if you were like blown away by certain synchronicities. If you are going through something personally, I will send you, you know, love and support behind it. And I know it takes a lot of vulnerability to do that. Um, and I, I'm always amazed by how much vulnerability we have in this community. And I would love to hear anything you want to share, but also just to say like, you know, okay, better put my sun hat on. <laughs> Whatever you want to put below, I am here for. I love you. I am supporting you and lifting you up. I'm excited for this journey. Okay, until I see your precious, wonderful, glorious, sunshiny self again. Mwah. Mia. Welcome in my card three. Ah. Land, arrive, be here with me now. I am so happy to have you in here. I can't wait to do this reading with you. All right, so we're going to take a look at how your crush feels about you. We're going to go into some real depth today. So prepare yourself. Go ahead and clear out some space. Clear out a little energy and invite the presence and the energy of this person in. So go ahead and imagine everything about them. Imagine this person, the last time you saw them, what they look like, the way their shoulders sit, the way they walk, talk the way that they move in the world, all of that goodness. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started with our gold deck and we're going to pull some cards here. So let's go ahead and keep this question in front of mind, how they feel about you, how your crush feels about you. We're going to let the cards just tell us whatever is coming up, whatever energy is out there, whatever we need to know. And we're going to, we're going to start there and then we can ask some specific questions. Okay. So, ah, hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Keep that person in front of mind. How is your energy feeling today? I want to know about your energy too. That's not what I'm asking though. That's not what I'm pulling the cards for, but, but that is what I'm asking you to tap into your feelings, your intuition. Okay. So let's pull these cards over and see what we have and what we're getting started with. So we're getting started with strength. Now I would love for you to intuitively invite anything that comes up as I turn these over to just sort of float up and hit you. So take notice of your initial feelings, just as I say the words, just as you see the pictures. So we have strength coming up. We have the two of swords. We have the eight of cups and we have the nine of cups. Our cups getting into all those feelings and emotions. We have the ten of swords. Our swords getting into thought space and airy space, uh, intelligence space. We have the hierophant. We have the ten of cups. And we have the nine of wands. We're being told a lot of information here. So I do want you to keep tapping into your intuition. And I also want you to keep tapping into that gorgeous, luscious, divine intuition that you have as I say things. See how they land. See how it hits. What feels like, mm, that feels right. It fits into place. The puzzle pieces are coming together. And what has resistance to it? 
And you'll notice as resistance comes up, sometimes resistance can be from inner beliefs and triggers and things, but sometimes inner resistance can also be from that intuitive knowing that there's another path, there's another line. So let's go ahead and read this map. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. And we're starting off with strength. And uh, I kind of want to just pull all the cards. I'm going to. I'm just going to pull all the cards on over here because I feel like we're getting so much information. So, so we're starting with strength. And there is a deep thread through this person. And they are strong. They are in, like they have this incredible resolve and they feel that in you too you also you share this you both have this ability to really stand in yourself stand in your life and there's a calm about that there's this knowing this mastery that you both share and they right you you recognize that and they recognize that in you um, I don't know if you recognize that in them, but I'm feeling they recognize that in you. They see a chord between the two of you. The two of you are aligned in some deep rooted way. And it really, it, 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 it's obvious. It's palpable. Now, this person is in, the, is in a moment where they're trying to make a decision, but they are not making a decision. And I getting into how they feel about you, they are not choosing to, I, I'm feeling like they're not choosing to move forward yet, that they're in this sort of holding pattern. They've decided sort of not to decide and to just sort of let things sit where they are without moving forward, without making a decision. And they're letting that be just, you know, like a kind of determining factor of like, okay, well, I'm not going to decide and let's see what happens. I, I'm not going to choose something and move forward yet. I'm just going to see what happens, see what turns up what unfolds without having to take any action, which could be frustrating on your end if that is true. Um, and this really goes for anything. Wherever you are with this person, this could be a person that you're seeing. This could be a person that you have barely talked to. This could be any form of person that's still gonna, we're still gonna stand in these, in these cards. Now we have the Eight of Cups. And with the Eight of Cups, you see this figure moving away from something and there's a, a part of them that's been, you know, the cup's getting into feelings and emotions that's been moving away from some emotional baggage, from something that's no longer for them. And they're walking away from that and, and, and leaving it behind. And they're moving into a new space. So that's part of their journey and where they've been coming from and where they're going to. Now, the Nine of Cups is coming in, and this person feels like you really have it all. You have it all together. You have been, you have all these feelings. You have all this emotion. You have this, this ability to live life, that you're really in life. You're really letting yourself live. You're really letting yourself accept it all. Bring it all to me. Bring it all in. Just bathe in all of it. There's something very alive about you. And it, it comes with a lot of feelings. That comes with a lot of uh, downs too, but ups. A lot of uh, like bubbling over of good things. And they have this just this feeling that you have it all together and that you really get what you want and that it's all coming for you. You seem kind of like this golden person that things just come together for you. Things work out for you. Everything comes to you. It's kind of like, you know, all your wishes are granted. Now we have the Ten of Swords. We have the Ten of Swords, we have the Hierophant, we have the Ten of Cups, and we have the Nine of Wands. Now with the Ten of Swords, I am feeling like, I am feeling like this person is in a, is in a bit of a stuck space. They have been moving away from something. They're not, you know, deciding on anything. And I think a real part of that is that they're stuck. They're in this, something's happened. It's really laid them out and they don't really know how to move forward. They don't really know how to get up from this. And this can get into, you know, past romance. They're getting out of a relationship. They're getting out of something that was big. This could be something else as well. I mean, this could be, you know, there's some kind of job thing or, you know, life thing that really has left them in a stuck position. 
but it does feel like this could get into that romance moving away from something that held a lot of heart space. And, and they don't know how to stand back up. And I mean, how would you stand back up with all these swords in your back? You know, this is a really intense space. And I, I think that they want to sort of tell you this or want to project this to you, but they also don't. So this is kind of a like maybe a little bit of a secret space that they're kind of just holding to themselves while they figure out what they're doing, although they haven't figured out what they're doing and they haven't made any decisions and have sort of refused to make any decisions. But there is there is a stagnant piece of them that's just like, you know, just sort of stuck where it is. Um, and we have the Hierophant. So this person, although they are stuck, they have a real mind to grow and they have a real mind to get better. And part of their process of dealing with everything and trying to get past the blocks that they have, because these are showing up as blocks for them with romance, with love for a future, this the, this person really tries to like figure things out. They want to go for wisdom. They want to get the answers. They're seeking and they have this seeker's mind where they're really trying to find the answers to, to how to move forward, how to let go how to restart their life, how to get out of this position. So there's a part of them that, that could be in the form of, you know, podcast listening or um, book consumption or uh, expert advice. But there's some part of them that's really seeking and trying to get past where they are and, and find the answers that they're looking for because they're not able to to really get the answers that they're looking for. And I think that a lot of that has to do with action, that they need to be able to take action, but they're in this immobile space. So the next best thing is just to sort of research and accumulate uh, wisdom, which feels like action, but it's not actually action. It's kind of just creating the plan or figuring out the information that surrounds the action without actually taking action, which they're not doing. Um, now we have the Ten of Cups here, and this is such a beautiful card. I like to call this card kind of like the happy ever after card. There is this openness to this card. And again, we're in the cups. We get that overwhelmed feeling of emotions, all this good stuff. There's the family here. There's a house here. So whatever that looks like, there's a, there is a piece of them that feels like, like, hey, this could be my person. This feels like there's a deep thread for them that feels like this could be home, you, that you could be home, that you could create something together, that it could be extremely good, that it could be overwhelmingly good, that it could be pouring out on the two of you. And, and I love that. I love that. Um, okay. And then we also have the nine of wands, which comes back to this space. So we know they're moving away. We know they're sort of in the stuck position. They have these blocks. They're being sort of held down. And this this comes back to the, that space that they've been hurt. There's, you know, a head wound here. The wands get into that fire and that passion. And even though they've been hurt, they are getting back up. They are, you know, they're making the effort to move away and they are standing back up to protect what they have, to get back in the fight, to get back to pursuing what it is that they desire for themselves. And they do desire soulmateship. They do desire love. They do desire happy ever after, but they don't know how to get there. They don't know how to take those first steps, which leaves them very immobile. I think it will be very difficult for those first few real big steps to happen. Even if this is somebody you're seeing, it, I think it could be hard for them to take those first few steps toward it being something serious. Just because they're in this immobile space and those first few steps, then the momentum could start. But those first few steps are very difficult to really, you know, get the drive, get the motivation, get the action to actually step into it. So this, you know, is a space where they're sort of just like protecting what they have, what is already there, what is, you know, what already exists for them, what they have left, what it, the, the remnants of what they're left with after being hurt or devastated. Okay, I want to pull some more cards. So I want to pull some more cards about 
I mean, really, I want to know about, uh, uh, <laughs> I want to know the energy about how they're going to, you know, circumvent these blocks. If this can be something that you could expect soon, is this the kind of thing you should be waiting for? What does this look like? So just about these blocks, what do we need to know and about them being able to take action and make progress? Um, so we have the three of wands. So there's a period of time that they're gonna they're gonna need to go through of really reviewing and seeing what has happened. And they're sort of taking stock of things. So being in their head. Now the wands get into fire energy, which is very movement oriented. But, you know, being in their head, which they are in a lot of ways, you know, really stuck in their head, they, they need to process and figure it out and see things and get some, some clarity in order to move forward here. So there's a, there's a period of time where they need to just review and that's okay. That is, you know, that can lead to some good movement. Okay, now we have we have the Queen of Swords reversed. Yeah, so also I think as this is coming up as uh as a block of them moving forward, this does feel like a past romance that there was someone who, you know, felt like was their person and had this real seat of power and knowing and um, truth seeing and clarity and but this person was not the person for them this person was not destined for them this person was not the right fit and wasn't all that she seemed to be so there's a letting go that is happening an opening of the hands I want to know anything else that we need to know about this block and really I want to know about some timing if we can if that energy is available for us Hi, Ace of Pentacles. The Aces bring in new opportunities and the Pentacles bring in things of this of this earth. And there is an opening that is coming in and this does feel soon. So this doesn't actually feel like this person is incapable of moving forward or standing up. I do think that they're gonna be able to move forward and I think it's gonna take a little patience on your end. Um, but I, I do think that they're going to be able to open their hands to this soon. And, um, and I think it, it, this gets into things of the world. So that could, you know, like often that gets into money when we're reading the cards, but I can get into like the physical body, physical presence. So the first part of this for them, I think would really get into like presence, like that they could, you know, show up. And not necessarily that they're showing up with their heart and their mind all together, ready to like move in. But I think that they could really, you know, just show up, be there, you know, physically be there where they're at a space where they're ready for the new opportunities. They're ready to bring something in. They're ready to hand something off to you. They're ready to be of value and to they see your value and to accept your value as something that they want to participate in. And that can also get into physical relationship that they want to, you know, like have intimacy. They want to touch you. They want to be with you. Um, there's, uh, you know, something precious about that as well. Okay. Um, last one for the, for all these blocks about timing and, um, and moving forward here. The Queen of Cups. Now the Queen of Cups coming up and I'm feeling like your deep intuition is going to be a real guiding force here. Look into the waters and see what you see. What do you see that is floating up? What do you see that is important for you to know? There's a lot of information already under the surface that you have feelings about and those feelings are accurate. Those feelings are real and it is a time for you to trust those feelings. Trust the intuitive hits that are coming in for you now. Let yourself lean into your deep inner knowing. And also, I am feeling like this is an answer that you have the answers that you know if this can move forward in a in a you know timely way that's right for you. 
but also I feel that. I mean, I feel that Queen of Cups energy and I also feel that they feel that Queen of Cups energy. You have this divine feminine essence you radiate. There is something deep and penetrating and emotional about you and that's beautiful. Okay, I wanna ask some new questions. So first of all, let's ask about if we move forward here, if this can progress down a path, what does that look like? What does that look like for you? What would that look like for the two of you? Mm -hmm. Hi, okay, we have the Four of Pentacles. And we have the Page of Cups. Two very different cards. The Four of Pentacles coming in with this slightly hoarding energy. So there's probably, as you move down this path, uh, a bit of them that is reluctant, the reluctant lover, the reluctant. And again, we're getting the pentacles and I, you know, this might even just get into, you know, physical touch, bonding, spending time together. But there's a, there's a part of them that's reluctant to really lean in and to let go, to open themselves up. Now also, but of course they, they're getting there. We know that that's coming in. Now, now also we have the Page of Cups, which are youthful messenger cards bringing the yummy cup energy, which you are so good with, which feelings and emotions, uh, and that you really do have it all. All of it's coming for you. Everything that you desire is showing up. There is also a lightness that is available here of levity, laughter, enjoyment, having fun, playfulness. There's something really available to you in just enjoying time together, not necessarily uh, right away taking it too seriously, but that can lead to deeper things, that fun, that playfulness, that bantering, that back and forth, that funny movie watching, that just sort of enjoying the oddities of life and being yourselves. It, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to show up to have available. Okay, now I would also like to ask, I would like to ask about, I, I wanna just lean into where we are actually, about where this is going. And I'm feeling this sort of down the road if things can you know, come together. What does that feel like? What does that look like? I'm closing my eyes if I, if I do anything weird with my hands, I like to let you know. Um, okay, we have the Eight of Swords. And there's something right back here. And we have the Queen of Pentacles reversed. So my immediate feeling is that, my immediate feeling is that what this can look like, this can get you into a space. And this doesn't, these, these don't feel like amazing, happy confirmations it feels like as you walk out of the woods and you get to a space where things have been moving along there might be a feeling that you've sort of gotten imprisoned by something a bit like it's hard to even take responsibility f for being where you are that uh, it feels like it's all sort of tied you up a bit and you can't get out of your thoughts and you can't move past a certain point and there's uh, perhaps not the best communication going on between the two of you for you to be able to express that and get yourself out of that space. Feeling like it's really just sort of trapped you in a bit. And the Queen of Pentacles reversed coming in, which tells me that you might feel off of your game. You might feel less than your most potent, powerful self. Now, this is showing up as a Pentacles card, which is very interesting because, you know, we've sort of been talking about this as a physical relationship. So if you started, that might be where things begin because the sword space and the heart space, the cup space might not be open and available to them right away. So the sort of moving into that like physical time and presence, but also you know, this can get into intimacy in a physical relationship. And there might be a part of you that feels disconnected from yourself on a physical level uh, if, if that moves into the space. And that could be that you need, I mean, hi, Queen of Cups, you need the emotion 
in order for it to, you know, and you need the head space and the mental space in order for it to really connect for you physically. That, you know, physically, it might just not do it for you. You're not going to feel like, yay, I love this. I feel like I'm, you know, a, a goddess out here enjoying my physical experience. It might feel like I, I don't really feel in touch with this part of myself right now. This doesn't feel necessarily connected to me. It takes me out of my power and out of my autonomy and out of my um, really being able to, to, to feel like I'm growing and providing and all the things that you want to feel just might not land until you're able to connect it to your emotions and your mind. So that might not be a good idea for you. Um, if things are really just like, oh, let's keep it casual and physical, that might not be the right space for you. You might want to just hold off on that so it doesn't, you know, drip into a space where now you're wound up in your thoughts in a sort of imprisoned way and you're feeling outside of yourself. Dip into your intuition. You know, you know yourself and you know your feelings and your emotions and you have a view of all these things that are underneath the surface. Trust the view that you have. It's a good view. I want to move into some cards for you specifically. So I would like to take a look and, and really I'm very curious about this. So I really want to start taking a look right there about what you need to know about your heart space, about what's going on right now, what is, you know, manifesting here perhaps with this person. And let's start with this person. What is manifesting here with this person? What do we need to know about your heart space and any action that you need to take, anything you need to be careful of? Okay, hi. So we have the three of wands, which is the double pull for us. So we are in a separate deck. We have the opportunity to pull duplicate cards and we are right away. Now, this person is moving into a space where they're taking, they're going to be taking this sort of, you know, like I'm going to see everything that's happened. I need to sort of step back and see it all. And, and, and that's very interesting because the cards are coming through and saying, hey, you should be doing the same. Take a step back and see what is really going on. Take a second and see where you've been. What is it that you're asking for now in relation to where you've been? Is some of what you're feeling and going through in a love and heart way, is it because of something from the past? Is it because of something else that happened? Just take a real step back and take a look at where you've been, what you've accomplished. Also, you know, the whole gamut of it, of, of how you got where you are. Take a look at how you got where you are romantically with, with the heart space and love in mind. Um, I'm going to keep that question on the table, so we're not moving away from that quite yet. And our next card for you is the Ace of Cups. I love this coming in. The Ace of Cups is coming in for you. You have so much love to give. Aces bring new opportunities. The cups bring in all of that, you know, gorgeous love, motion, feeling. And hi, my queen of cups. You know, this is a good card to come in. And this is telling me that keep filling up your heart space, keep letting it overflow. And it's gonna bring more and more and more of that feeling. And think of that manifestation energy where we get to the emotion that you want to have in order to bring that to you. Keep doing that. This also tells me that new things are coming in for you. New opportunities to fill your cup so it is overflowing is coming for you. There is love on the way. There is a drench of love. That's, I don't know that that makes any sense the way I said it, but you know what I mean. Just this water pouring out over you, this love just pouring out over you, filling you, giving you everything you desire. And it is coming in. Okay, now I wanna know about your heart space. I, and I wanna clear that. I wanna know about your heart space your heart space, your energy space. I want to know about what you need to know about love in general. Uh, so really taking a bigger step back about what I need to know about love for you. 
about your heart space for you, okay? Now, getting us started, yes, there's, uh, this, this is, the duplicate card, this does have that feeling of hoarding, pulling back, not being willing to, um, you know, be this sort of willing participant. This is very interesting to pop up because once again, you know, as I was reading this earlier, I was really feeling this more coming from, from them. I was imagining that they would not be as expressive and giving and open but whether that is from them or that's coming from your energy, I'm not really sure. And that is in your energy. So there's a part of you that is perhaps reluctant, a reluctant partner that you're a little reluctant for certain things. And this could be, again, we're in pentacles. So, you know, we have this feeling that you could be reluctant to physically be open with someone, to physically be intimate with someone, to spend the time and the touch and the, um, you know, sort of really be there in that way. Um, but also this could just, this, this could just be an unwillingness to really open yourself up, open your heart up because we know that those things are connected for you. So that might be why you might've been taken advantage of before or feel like people have wanted just a physical relationship before and your heart got hurt because you have all this heart space and there's there is a part of you that's that is a little closed off this way and that is a general thing it's not just as we're relating to this person but as you're relating to anyone as you're you know inviting love in mhm mm yeah yeah the seven of swords so we were just saying this that it might feel like something was taken away from you that something felt like you were taken advantage of and that you you don't feel good about it it felt very cavalier it felt very cruel it felt very easy for the other person to do but very hurtful to you and that's important to recognize and to own and it's okay that you need to process this and process how you feel about it and and own where you are with that and what the process is going to be for you moving forward and take a breath into that you know if any of those feelings are like coming back up take a breath into that i just want to clear out any hurt any any of those feelings that could be coming back up <sighs> Some, some time to clear and to heal and to sit with your feelings, to sit with your heart, to sit with all of that could be very helpful. Um, okay, let's continue on. So I would like to know, I would like to know about what action you can take right now to clear any blocks. If there's any action you can take for any blocks that are popping up, if there's any action that you can take to help yourself be in the right space to receive real love, not just something that that feels like at the end of the day, it feels like, oh, I just got taken advantage of or I didn't feel, you know, like in my in myself, like this is what I wanted to do or that outcome that I wanted. And the sun comes in and the sun comes in to warm us up. Thank you. <laughs> I love this card. The optimism comes in, the positivity, this charge comes in. Action to take. Feeling like you are in the positivity, absolutely. But I am feeling like you need to spend some time outdoors and you need to spend some time being playful, really getting to a playful place. And I think that playfulness that you can experience with people before getting into a physical relationship with someone, before getting into something that's physically intimate with someone, really making it about the playfulness where you can have fun and you can laugh and it can be positive and joyful before you, you know, take any steps into anything that feels like it's disconnecting you from your emotions and turning you into 
uh, someone who's not completely in their seat of power. So really, that's going to start removing any blocks is let yourself just think about like fun and positivity, laughter, playfulness, getting outdoors. This could be, you know, hiking. And this is beyond romance as well. This is going to help your blocks in romance, but but doing this action outside of romance. So like with a friend, you know, going somewhere where you can laugh, where you can feel like, hey, everything really is open. Everything is really good. Everything is okay. Everything feels nice. Getting to that space is going to be important. I'm going to stay with that question about any action you can take for any blocks. Okay, now we have the Page of Pentacles. Oh, wow. I think that a letter should be written. And I don't know that this is a letter that needs to be sent. But I think a letter should be written as like a journal exercise. And we're back in the Pentacles, if you'll notice. Uh, and, you know, these youthful messenger cards. This can be... A very rudimentary letter. Again, this is not something that needs to be sent. This is something for you and you can say it in your youngest voice that you want to say it in. It doesn't have to be grown up. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to have good reasoning. It doesn't have to, you know, stand the test of society. It's just you and your feelings, just like a child would. This hurt my feelings. This didn't feel good. This didn't make me feel like a powerful version of myself. This felt very disconnected from my heart and my emotions. It's, it's time to write a letter. And I would love for you to do that today if you feel up to doing that today. But this is, we're asking for actions to help overcome these blocks. And I want you to be your most wonderful, sunny, thriving self in all the gloriousness, your cup overflowing every single, every single day. Almost dropped a, almost dropped a curse in there. Didn't do it. Didn't do it. YouTube is safe. Okay. Um, I want to continue on. I want to ask, I do want one more card for action for any of the blocks, because I think this is going to be really important for you for moving forward, for getting what you truly desire. And I want you to have everything that you truly want for yourself. The Knight of Swords is coming in. Now, you have some extremely divine feminine energy. You really do, it, that is a part of, of what you own. Now, the Knight of Swords coming in like this, I feel like this is an energy you need to take on. And this is a very divine masculine energy um, and a very, very masculine energy in general. It's fast moving. It's action oriented. It's courageous. It's come what may. It's straight into battle. No fear. There's something here that, that will really help you move forward. So I want you to think of something that you have been thinking about doing that scares you, that takes a lot of courage, that takes a masculine energy, but, but it's not really felt in your capability because it doesn't really match your energy. So just think of what that might be. And then I want you to commit to doing it, but I want you to commit to doing it. And you can make believe, you can pretend, you can say like, okay, I'm just going to play a role right now. And I'm going to pretend that I'm the kind of person who's not afraid to do this. I'm going to pretend like I'm the kind of person who could charge straight forward and do this. And then you're going to do it. <laughs> and you can pretend the whole time. But the funny thing is that at the end of the day, you're not really pretending because at the end of the day, you did it. So I want you to get to a space where you feel that undercurrent of this energy that is fast moving. It's ready for, for war, ready for action. Everything's just flying by you. You move straight forward, full focus, full force. No worries about, uh, you know, who else is on the battlefield. You are just really focused, full force ahead, straight in. Mm. <laughs> I like this. Okay. Now I want to pull one more card for you. So I want to pull one more card for you. 
And I wanna let the cards dictate what that is, what it is that you need to hear. Again, I'm closing my eyes just in case the cards leave frame or do anything weird. Um, I wanna pull one more card for you for what you might need to know that we don't know to ask for you. Um, mm -hmm. I'm feeling two cards. I'm feeling this top card and there's another card that needs to be cut. So here we are. Oh boy. Mm. Take a moment, my intuitive Queen of Cups. And what do you intuitively feel here? We have the world and we have the Wheel of Fortune. It makes me smile, both of these cards. It's all coming to you. It is graceful and beautiful and full. And your divine feminine energy, it is recognized. It is applauded. It is wonderful. You, you really, just, you shine and you are magnetized and it is good. There's nothing wrong with you. That just popped into my head, so I'm just saying that. There's nothing wrong with you. You are wonderful exactly as you are. Lovable exactly as you are. Worthy exactly as you are. This is also saying, you know, there's an ending of a cycle here. There's something that's leaving your energy field. Something is coming to a completion. And it's good to celebrate anything that happened in there that's worth celebrating. And it's good to know that new things are coming to you. There's a whole new cycle of life starting for you. There's something really beautiful where you're going to look back and think, it all began here. This was a definitive, you know, this was this part of my life and this is this part of my life. And here it is. And it feels very free, very easy, very uninhibited, very, uh, very of yourself, that you get to be exactly who you are. And in that space, it's going to feel like every good thing is falling in your path. That every good thing is meant for you that you're the luckiest woman in the world. You're the luckiest person in the world. All of the things just drop right into your path. There are these little presents that you pick up over and over and over again. And it's like, how do other people not have this? It's gonna feel like, wow, I can't even believe that, that it's just coming for me over and over and over again. Every beautiful thing that I desire, every beautiful thing that I could want is here. And it just lands right in my lap, easy. It's not even difficult. You're an extremely lucky person and you're gonna be feeling the effects of that soon. All right, now, my dear one, I wanna pull over this anchor card here. So, oopsie daisies. Hi, Queen of Cups. Look, the Queen of Cups card just popped up. Wanted to, it was like, nope, nope. I don't want to be held underneath of there. I would like to be in my, well, let's just pop you right in the center because that's where you belong. Um, we're going to let her sit where she wants to sit on her throne in the middle of everything because, because you have this divine essence. Oh, that, love that. Sit into that. So let's see, so we're asking about what this person thinks about you and feels about you. And we have some really interesting messages coming in. We know they're in a difficult space and they have all of these blocks. And we know that you have some deep feelings about what's going on and that you should tune into those, those deep intu intuitive hits. We also know that there's some of that 10 of cups energy riding along that that they feel like this could be the thing, but they're paralyzed, but they're not moving, but they're not taking action. So let's go ahead and see what else we have. Okay. Well, the lovers is popping up and you will see that I have censored this card for YouTube, but this is, I love this card. I mean, Everyone loves this card, I'm sure, but this is particularly two people who are standing naked in front of each other. They're completely exposed, completely seen, but there's no holding back. There's no even knowing that 
that, that they should be anybody else but themselves. They're just themselves in front of each other. They're faded, they're equals. It's beautiful. This is a beautiful card. This person feels like, like you could be the kind of person that they could completely be themselves around and that you could have intimate knowledge of each other and it would be a good thing. It wouldn't be used against you. It wouldn't be used against them. It would make you more powerful, stronger. It would make your relationship better. They wouldn't have to put on a mask. You wouldn't have to put on a mask. That this could be the thing. This could be, you know, this could be the thing. So, I, I don't want to cast too many uh, words on top of that because, because I know you have such intuitive sense and sight. And I really want you to let your intuition come up here. And I really feel that, you know, I'm really feeling that off of all the cards that you really do have this special vision where you can pull, you know, sit into that. Mm. 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 Also, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. It means the world. It also helps let us know to do more content like this. So my Queen of Cups, feeling everything that you feel, I would like for us to just pop a heart below because you have all of this sight in there. You can see things deep within your soul, things that get filtered through your heart. And I want you to pop that below to own this and accept this. If you feel vulnerable enough to share, please share. I love comments, please comment. I would love to read what you have to say. I'd love to add a little boost of love and positivity and uplifting whatever it is that's on your mind, uh, just sending that straight to your words. Ah, okay, until I see your precious, wonderful self again. Mwah. Mia. Welcome in my card for ah, land arrive. Thank you for being here with me. I'm excited about this reading. We're finding out how your crush really feels about you. Everything, all kinds of juicy details. We're going to do a nice in-depth reading today. We're going to find out all about the crush. We're going to feel all about you. We're going to find out all kinds of juicy information. So take a moment, let yourself clear out and invite in this person's presence. Imagine them now. <sighs> Let's begin. I'm grabbing our gold deck to get us started. Mm, let yourself just bask in that imagining, bringing that essence in. Imagining his face and the way that he moves, everything about them. Mm, little laughter sounds. It doesn't matter where you are in this relationship. This can be a non-relationship in this, in this crush. You could have never talked to them before. You could have, you know, gone on dates before. You could be in the middle of a, uh, almost getting to a relationship. This is, this is for wherever you are right now. Okay. Mm. Here we go. So let's begin. I'm going to pull over all of our cards all right, we have the Nine of Swords reversed. We have the Seven of Wands. We have the Hanged Man. We have the Four of Pentacles. And let's see what we have over here. We have the Empress. Hi. We have the Tower. Hi. We have the Seven of Pentacles. We have the Ten of Cups. Hi. So what I'd love for you to do right away, and I've, I've been really encouraging this today, is I'd like you to take just your intuitive hits. What do you intuitively see? What do you see of the cards? What is the energy that you're getting? What immediately rises up and gives you a little thunk? Mm. Let's begin. All right, so this person, this person is losing a little bit of sleep. They've, uh, so they had a moment where they, and who knows what it's from. We're gonna take a look and just get more information as we go. But the, there was something that was really troubling them that was really, um, you know, keeping them up, making them anxious, getting into their mind, playing with their thoughts. 
And things have changed since you entered the picture. So you came in and suddenly they're not having those anxious thoughts anymore. They're not having that same kind of distress signal right before they go to bed. Things are changing in their alignment. You are putting them to sleep <laughs> in a good way. And it's not just the, the your thoughts, you know, you that you're rolling through their mind. It's, you know, that, that they're calm now. Like those worries are kind of taken a back seat for the moment because you've entered the picture. And that feels good. That's a good thing. We like that. Um, now this person also feels a little bit like there might be a lot of people who are interested in you. There might be a lot of energy around you or just that confident energy that says, you know, hey, I gotta, I gotta fight for this. I gotta hold some space for this. Our wands get into this passion, this kind of like flaring up of like physical energy. Um, I'm feeling here where they're kind of maybe even like peacock a little bit, like, hey, I need to prove myself. I need to hold some space here. I need to hold off these other energies that are coming in for this person because she is so attractive. She's pulling in all of this energy around her. You're so magnetized. And so there's this feeling of like having to be competitive, having to stay in the game, having to hold some space, hold some ground for you um, and in your mind. We have the hanged man. And this is telling me that it's possible this person has not really reached out to you, talked to you very much, uh, made any sort of moves on you. Um, or if they have, maybe they're doing it very slowly uh, or sort of just holding back from what they would really like to do. Because this, this is the kind of, you know, just sort of like holding a space, hanging out, hanging out. <laughs> you know, taking a little bit of a like, all right, I'm gonna take a step back. I'm gonna see what happens. Let's see what Let's see what transpires. Let's see what's going on. I need to make a game plan here. I need to see things from a different perspective here. I need to look into my intuition here and see if she's picking up what I'm putting down. See if the, you know my signals are coming across right. So they might not actually be making any kind of you know, steps forward here. Now, also we're getting the four of pentacles, which is an interesting card to, you know, pull into this mix. The pentacles often get into worldly things. They can get into, you know, finances and money and items and stuff. They can also, and I mean stuff as in like things, um, they can also get into things that have value, especially when we're talking of love relationships. They can also uh, get into the physical body. So there's maybe something about you too that holds, and I don't, I don't feel this or read this as a bad thing, that, that you hold uh, this sort of presence um, of, of not giving it away. You know, you're not just giving it to anybody. Your body is yours. And that's not available. It's not on sale. It's not up for grabs. It's not, it's like, you know, precious and contained. And you're maybe a little frugal with it. You know, like you don't just douse your attentions, uh, your romantic attentions your, with anyone. It's you're selective. You're a very selective person on who you're gonna open up to. So you keep it close to the chest until you're really ready to open up to someone or to share, to you know, really be in that kind of energy and in that kind of space. Now we have the 10 of cups. We have the seven of pentacles. We have the tower, we have the embrace. Well, I mean, take your intuitive hits off the 10 of cups. Tens are cards of completion. I love this card. I often call this card my like riding into the sunset, you know, kind of card. Uh, it's it's so beautiful. It's like, hey, we've got it all. Look, we have open arms. Life is good. We've got a family here. We've got a home. Things are warm and like, come bring us more good stuff. The cups get into feelings and emotions. This is an overflow of goodness. This is a happy, lovely, together card. So there is something about you, either about your real self or your imagined self and what they imagine you would, you know, truly, you know, be like as a, as a full, complete partner, soulmate kind of thing where they're like, you know, I can imagine this person as my person forever. I can imagine this person you know, having a family with this person, whatever type of family that looks like, that could be, you know, a, 
um, a blended family that could be a, a pet family, that could be uh, just the two of you family, but there's something that feels like, hey, this could be my happy ever after. This could be my home. This could be my person. Um, and they've imagined that. They've imagined that coming together and what that would look like and feel like, and it feels pretty good, looks pretty good. We have the seven of pentacles here as well. So I'm also feeling like perhaps they have been planting some, they've been sort of trying to plant some seeds to get you to open up a little bit to let, you know, like, okay, let's, let's see what happens if I, you know, smile this way or talk this way, or they've been planting some seeds and trying to watch them harvest. And I think there's a lot of patience to this person as well, which is a great quality that they're willing to wait for it and that you're precious enough to wait for. They're willing to have the patience for everything to grow with you. And there's a part of them that's planted it, is watching it, seeing what comes out of it and sort of plotting and taking their time to see how things grow with you. If they can grow into something where you can open up and be someone that they can start to, you know, make moves towards or, you know, make that first entryway. Now we have the tower and we have the empress. So two very different cards. First of all, hi tower. <laughs> Uh, the tower speaks of big change. So perhaps you've had a sort of transformation recently. Perhaps you had a transformation in your personality or the way that you act towards them or a transformation in your personal life that has really been demonstrated out to the world around you, whether you know that or not. If you recently got out of a relationship, if you decided to take your power back, if you decided to reclaim something if you decide to become more yourself live into your essence even more to really hold your own but there is something bright and like disruptive about this change um and that that you're really coming across as as having you know there's a transformation some sort of transformation has happened and, uh, you know, this could be in the way that you look too. You could have dyed your hair or, you know, you're wearing your clothes a different way, but there is something pretty radical that has got their attention. And everybody's kind of looking because that energy is extremely noticeable. Even if you're like, nobody knows that I got out of this relationship. Nobody knows that I'm wearing my hair differently, you know, but there is something radically different that is on display. Now the Empress is coming in, my Empress. The Empress is such a beautiful, graceful, divine, feminine, growthful, fertile card. It's so lovely. There is something so divinely feminine about you. Your beauty, the way you see beauty in the world, sensuality, the way you move, your you know body language, your gracefulness, the way that you interact in the world, your empathy, your kindness, your growth energy. And there is just this, this ableness of you that sits into this peacefulness because you do have it. It's not something you have to grasp for or reach for. It's something you possess, something you are. And there is, that's, that's something that they absolutely, they're really, into about you. They're really attracted to about you. Okay, let's continue on. So I want to ask some more questions. Now I want to start to like branch out and ask some specific things. So I would like to know about, so this person, this all feels really good. Um, this feels like a good place. They're, you know, they've come out of something a little bit, you know, intense. Let's find out a little bit about that, what they've come out of. What I'd really like to know is just if there are blocks for this person for moving forward. So are there things from the past that are blocking them? Is there other blocks in some other way for this person? Is there anything we need to know about here that's going to keep them from really being able to move forward with you? The Fool. Mm, now, the Fool is a great card. The Fool is the a start of the entire journey. This openness, this willingness to, you know, to, to, to get out there and to try it, even if it hurts, makes them vulnerable, makes them feel naive. 
Now, this coming up is a block. This feels like they've been the fool, they've played the fool, they've been open to it before, and they now have an incredible hesitation to be in that position again. They don't want to feel naive. They don't want to feel vulnerable. They've stepped out on that ledge and it didn't work out so well for them. It was a deep, steep fall um, and it had repercussions. It had some, some real torturous thoughts that came along with it. So this coming up as a block really feels like there, you know, this card is so wide open. Look at these wide open arms. There might be some closed off space around them. They might be closed. It might be hard for them to be open. It might be hard for them to engage that way, to take chances, to take risks, to be courageous in this way, to be adventurous, to start a new journey. And that could be really hard for them. Um, I want to keep asking about these blocks and then I do kind of want to come back around and see how, you know, is this a space where you make the first move? Is this a space where you open up your energy that way first? But let's find out a little bit more about their blocks first. So we're staying on their blocks. Anything that could block this from moving forward. Justice. And that's a tricky one. If they feel like they are, things have been unfair, it hasn't been you know, they haven't been dealt a good hand and they need to get justice and they want things to be made right before they can really move on from something that's asking a lot. And that can be very difficult for them to let go of, to feel like they've gotten their justice, to feel like they're ready to move on. If that's sort of sticking around in their energy, and you know, that's not fun for anyone. That's not fun for them. It's not fun for you either. Um, and now we're looking at um, these blocks again for them. I just want one more card for their blocks. And we have the world. And the world is a, a wonderful card. I mean, we call this this uh, figure in the center sometimes the dancer. It's the closing of a cycle, the starting of a new cycle. Now, the interesting thing here is that this is coming up as a block that this closing of a cycle for them could make it hard for them to... To, to be ready for something new. That, you know, the past and the closing of a cycle has not made them ready and adventurous to start a new cycle, uh, able to get into something new and fresh. And, uh, and that is tricky. So we're seeing some residue from a past relationship. We're seeing some residue from past hurts, ills, and you know, this, I feel like this justice card may or may not be from a past relationship. This might be from, it could be from something from work, but there is, there is this feeling of, you know, the, the fool feels very romantic to me. Um, there's this feeling of, of being hesitant. Um, and you know, the hangman comes in and, and that sort of feels like, yeah, all right, this, this person might, you know, sort of be running, chasing their own tail a little bit. And, you know, they're daydreaming and thinking about you and all these things, but but where's the action? Now, I would like to know, I, I would like to know a little bit about, um, I would like to know a little bit about, I would like to know a little bit about their their heart space and okay, actually I did say that we were going to ask about you making the first move. So let's ask that first, then we'll get into their heart space. So I do want to know about you making the first move. Could that be, what kind of guidance do we have here? How would they receive and be receptive to that? If you, to like level things up and maybe you already have, maybe you are dating, but it's just not moving forward. So how does that feel? Two of swords. So uh, this is very interesting. The Two of Swords is a card that says, hey, there are two things to decide on. You're not making a decision. And you're choosing not to make a decision. And if you don't decide, the universe decides for you. So really, I'm feeling this as, yes, you can make the first move here. If you don't decide to make the first move, nothing will happen. You leave it up to the universe. You just leave it up to... Uh, to some other force. You're allowed to be the force that moves your life forward. Um, and I think that would be perfectly fine here. Um, this is, you know, just sort of saying, hey, you don't do it. Really, you're, you're going to get nothing. 
like nothing might happen. So, you know, if you, if you choose to make a decision about this and to say, hey, I really like this person, I would like to, you know, and, and you can do that in any way that feels comfortable. Let's ask the cards how to do that. Because it might be more of a like direct, you know, I'm going to be a little bit more of the masculine energy here. Or I could go the other way and be a little more of like, I'm going to drop these hints and make it real clear that, you know, like with these hints, I'm going to, I'm going to color all of this in the painting here. Okay. Ooh, right in here. I'm feeling a little something. Okay. We've got the chariot. I love clear answers. Clear answers are so delicious. This is delicious energy too. The chariot is a fast, strong, masculine energy, action oriented. I think directness is great. Here we are. This is, you don't have to, um, you know, you have a real divine feminine energy and that might make you shy away from ever being the person who makes the first move for, you know, but it would go over well here and you can be very direct about it. You don't have to, you know, create a whole bunch of excuses or just drop a whole bunch of hints. You can just take straight action forward in a very calm, decisive manner. And, you know, I really like the way this conversation is going. I think that we should continue it. Boom, done. You know, it's a, uh, it's very direct. It's very forward moving. It's very action oriented, and it's fast. It gets you there quickly. Uh, so you know, you can practice if you need to practice. Feel free to do that, and you're not going to lose any of your divine feminine energy. It's oozing out of you. So don't worry about that. Okay. Now I want to know. Um, I want to know about his heart space. I want to know if his heart space will open up to you. Is there a potential for that in the future? Is it like, is the healing journey? How's that going to be going? How is it going? Let's see what we got. Temperance. Okay, so slow and steady here for heart space. Um, there's going to be a giving and a taking. And this makes me also think that maybe your heart space is going to need a giving and a taking. That perhaps both of you... I mean, we have these two cups that are that are flowing between each other and it makes me feel like maybe your heart has been hurt as well and that there's going to be a little bit of a shared heartbreak going into this space, which is not a bad thing. You might both be getting out of something. You might both have had your hearts hurt and you're both moving into something new while you're releasing this other thing. So, you know, slow and steady, let it be consistent and temperate and uh, stay balanced with it as much as possible. Try not to, you know, dive off a cliff in that full way. And, and you know, I, I don't think they're going to let their energy do that. It doesn't feel like it because of that block. But it feels like, uh, it feels like you might both have a little bit of a shared healing experience kind of. Uh, with each other and I'd like to know a little bit I, I want to just pull another card for that same question I would just like to know a little bit more um and we have the wheel of fortune yeah that feels so nice the wheel of fortune is you know good things coming in great fortune good you know happy lucky yummy drop it right into my lap kind of things now I'm feeling this as we're asking about their heart space and if they're going to be open to moving forward, that that things are going to feel like they're changing. Like I do think there's a transitional period for this person. There might also be one for you. We're going to pull some cards for you as well. So we're, we're going to come to your heart space and see what you need too. It does feel like they're going to need some time. It's not going to be something where they're ready to jump off a cliff. They, you know, they've been hurt they, before. They're going to be wary of doing that. But it does feel like as this transition happens, there are some transitional things that will happen within the beginning of this where it will change their mentality from being the heartbroken one who needs vengeance, you know, like who things weren't fair to being the lucky one who gets what they want, who's, you know, truly, you know, blessed and is so grateful. And that's going to take a little bit of time in that transition area. So as that transitions around, that's what really gets them to be in an open space, really ready and open and receptive for something, but that takes a bit of time. So 
they have to walk that road a little bit and have those blessings drop in on them a little bit before they start to feel that opening. Now, I just want to let the cards, you know, I just want to let the cards speak to us. So like anything that we need to know, anything that's coming through that just feels really important. I'm closing my eyes. If I do anything weird with the cards, that is why. Okay, yes, I am feeling this card. And there's a card back here I'm feeling as well. Here we are. All right, so uh, our last card is our last two cards for this person. Oh, oh, hi. <laughs> well, this is what the cards need us to know. The cards need us to know that this person has excellent potential. This could really be something. This could really be, this is worth having patience for. Now, of course, you both have to overcome any blocks. You both have to be willing to be open to it and to like move in that in that direction. But the energy around it, it's strong. It's strong. It's good. It's got potential. They certainly have you know, the right bones, the right making for something that could be strong and sturdy and seen and known and naked in front of each other, completely seen, completely yourselves, no masks involved, just who you are accepted and loved and not just accepted and loved, but, but truly championed for who you are, faded. There is really good potential here. Now, also the Knight of Swords comes in with this fiery, this fiery intensity, so fast, so furious, so known, so true, so clear in the mind. And this really tells me that there might be a turning point here. And I don't know that I feel like this is just for his energy. I feel like this could be this sort of combined energy between the two of you. This feels like a path that you would walk at the same pace. It doesn't feel like one, like you're walking ahead and suddenly you look back and he's back there. It's kind of like you're walking step by step for each other. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't try to jump ahead because of X, Y, Z, or he won't try to jump ahead. But I, I do think that in your heart space, in your heart of hearts, you'll be moving at the same pace. And it feels like once the clarity comes. Once the clarity is known and in hand that like this person is my person, if that happens and you get to that space, if you guys make it that far and if you want more details, there's a link below so you can get more details. Uh, if you, if you, once that happens, it will be a fast energy. You know, you might be slow moving in, but once you get to the truth of it and the clarity of it, it's no longer a slow ride. It's no longer, you know, you know, a seven year journey to getting to where you want to be with this person. Once you land there, then it's fast. It's easy. You're all speed. Everything is go, go, go. All in, full on, not going to lose. Absolutely. Let's go in total courage, full focus, not seeing anybody else. It's just, you know, everything, everything is moving forward. Um, can we just, I'm just going to move our little lover's card a little bit so we see, so we see it more. I just love this energy peeking through for us and I want to keep it peeking through for us. Okay, now I'm going to move to our pink deck because I want to pull some cards specifically for you. Okay, so I'm bringing in some cards for you. Let's get into your energy. Let's see what you're bringing to the table. Okay, so first of all, I just wanna leave this open. First of all, I would like to know anything we need to know about your energy that's showing up right now. Now, this is not necessarily have to do with this person, just anything we need to know. Okay, so this is so interesting. You have this gorgeous divine feminine energy, but you're also bringing in some real Knight of Wands energy with you. You do have some divine masculine energy in there that is full force ahead. Uh, the Knights, the um, the the Wands, uh, they they have a real unstoppable quality to them. They're this fiery energy. They have this growth with them too, but there is something very unstoppable. Obstacles in the way, no problem. Got it. Can do it. Capable. 
able, just really driven and motivated and passionate and fiery. This is also telling me too, that you are in this fiery like moment for you as well, where there's something physically fiery about you too. And this could get into your attraction, your, um, you know, your physical being in your body, feeling very physically attractive, feeling, uh, you know, all eyes are on you, boom, pow, you know, just sort of lighting things up. And that I feel like you're in a lit up space uh, for something in your life as well. And that's very attractive to other people. And that could be work related, career related, where you're just like, you're trotting forward, you're galloping forward. Galloping is a better word than trotting. Galloping forward. You're just sort of like, you're on fire. You're burning. You're just moving, moving, moving. And I love that. That's a yummy energy that's coming in for you. Let's, go, let's pull one more card for that because I would like to know a little bit more about what's showing up in your energy right now. Hi. Okay. We got, ah, it, yep. Okay. We got our, uh, we got our two of swords. So our two of swords showing up as a, if, uh, if a decision is out to, you know, to, to be made, here we are, we're getting our duplicate card over here, uh, that, that, uh, you, you have to make a decision. You don't have to make a decision. If you don't make a decision, it will be made for you. You have decisions to be made. They're, you know, paths to go down. But if, and which is so interesting because this card showed up and we were really talking to you with this card as well. So this is really coming in as confirmation. If you needed it, this is it. That if you decide not to take action, then whatever happens will just be because it happens. You'll just be sort of like, hey, I'll just sort of leave it up to whatever forces are working here to make that decision for me. And so the choice is really yours that you can choose. You don't have to be blindfolded to this. You don't have to decide not to make a decision. Not making a decision is a decision in itself. That's the best way to put it that you can make a decision here. You can move forward here. You can ask this person, you know, you can, you can make these first moves. You can do this, even if that's uncomfortable. But if you don't, then it's possible nothing might happen or you're just gonna be leaving it up to, to you know, the energies that be, whether they're his energies that are having a hard time doing that, having a hard time making those first movements because of their blocks and where they're coming from. So the ball is in your hands. Um, very interesting coming through as a, as a sort of double confirmation there. Now, let's see, I wanna ask some specific questions. I would like to know about this person and you and how this would affect you. What would this feel like? What would, what is the, you know, what is the move here with this person? Uh huh. Okay. So a real giving and taking. And again, uh, we have the balance scales. Remember we got into the temperance I, and I'm really feeling like this is a space where it's, it, it's saying, Hey, you know, keep it balanced, give and take. It's a giving and a taking. There's a generosity here in going at the right pace. Um, as you're getting started that you'll be walking, you know, really at the same pace. You're not going to run forward. They're not going to run forward. There might be moments where you do, but generally it will be giving, receiving, giving and receiving. You're both giving, you're both receiving. There's something very special about that, but let it go at its own pace. Let it go at its own timing and its own pacing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still asking about this person. <laughs> And the tower shows up again. Hi. So the tower was something that we already saw in you through other people's energy, through this person's energy. Now, this energy is popping back up here for you. And it has to do with this person as well. That This transformation that you're going through, that you've been through, this is something that's really showing up here. There's something important about this transformation. So if you need time to finish part of this transformation, if you've really been like showering yourself in self-love, if you've been really showing up for yourself, if you've been riding your Knight of Wands self straight into the fire and you need some more of that momentum, you need to focus on your career more, you need to 
let yourself do that. This transformation is important for this relationship to happen. If this becomes a relationship, if this becomes something more, if this becomes something that's, you know, forever, if this becomes, you know, something that's faded, that's let it, let yourself transform if that's what needs to happen, but also embrace that transformation, embrace that change. There's a lot of difficult parts of change. Change is not easy. This especially is, you know, sometimes can feel like a destructive change. You know, someone, you got out of a relationship and it feels awful. You spend some nights crying yourself to sleep and screaming in your pillow. And sometimes you feel perfectly fine about it. It This could be this very d disruptive energy. So if this is still burning to the ground, let it burn to the ground. Let it finish its incineration and and then you can let that chariot energy take over and you can make those decisions. You know, you can make the decision now, but you can let this play out as it needs to play out so you have the full scope of that transformation for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I want to let that land one more time. I want to know more about you. I, I like so far everything I'm reading off of this crush of yours that I, so I, I do want to pull some more information about it. And we have the world. Okay. Again, another duplicate card. This is a whole separate deck. So we always have the possibility of pulling duplicate cards, but it doesn't often happen where it's, you know, it's not so many cards that are duplicate cards. Right now we have, you know, three duplicate cards that are coming through. Um, which is really nice because we really like those confirmations. Sometimes we need reinforcement. It also means maybe you need a lot of reinforcement. Maybe you need to hear some of these things a second time. Now with the world, the world is, uh, this is different because that really was a reading for this person. So first of all, let's reiterate what we were reading from this person that you know, coming through as a block for them, that this transition they're going through. Remember, the world gives us that transitional time. It's the ending of a cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. But also, I feel like this card A comes through because, first of all, we'll take a look at the dancer, you know, figure that sometimes we call her on the card that the divine feminine energy is really taps to your divine feminine energy. So there's a part of this that's saying you can be the start of the next cycle for this person that, you know, you walk into this the right way, that their blocks don't get in the way, that you both choose to move forward. This could be fantastic. You could be the beginning of this whole new cycle. Now, with a whole new cycle, I do feel a lot of long-term feelings with that. I feel a lot of commitment vibes with that. I feel like, you know, new era kind of vibes with that. Now, the other thing about this too is, you know, this coming through is that you are ending a cycle and you are beginning a fresh new cycle as well. And the important part about this fresh new cycle that you are beginning as you come out of this transformative time is that you come with this freedom. I mean, look at this freedom of this character. Sitting into that divine feminine freedom of feeling vulnerable, you're not putting a mask on you, you're not pretending to be anybody but who you are, you're just being yourself in the world and it is captivating. Let yourself be yourself, it is captivating. And trust that, that it is, uh, it is something that should be on display for everyone to see. It should be open for everyone to see because it's beautiful and captivating. Okay, I wanna continue on. So now I would like to ask, I would like to look at any blocks for you. And the sun keeps going, the clouds keep passing over the sun today. So that my lighting is probably changing every like few seconds here. We're going from overcast to sunny to overcast again. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at you. Let's talk about any blocks. It is kind of funny that the clouds covered and got a little darker, as I said. Any blocks that are coming in for you. Okay, here we are. Okay, well, I love clear answers. <laughs> this is rather very clear uh, answer to our question. 
that there's some heartbreak that's really blocking you. There's pain in the past. It makes sense that you're going through this tower transition. It makes sense that something is burning to the ground because this is very, you know, to, to say the obvious, piercing. It's very piercing. This is, you know, straight through the heart and this is difficult. This is hard. This is challenging. This is some thunderstorms around it. And whatever you're going through right now, first of all, I want to send you some love for that. <sighs> Next, I want you to know that that if, if you choose to hold on to it, if there's anything you need to forgive from that time, from yourself, from the other person, if there's anything you need to let go of, do that work. Do that work because you don't want this to block you from something that is amazing and something that could lead you into a whole new future and meet your desires. I know I want to say I don't want you. This is what I wanted to say. I wanted to say I don't want you to choose a past heartbreak over choosing your future happiness. But I also want you to make your own choices. So it doesn't really matter how it I want you to choose. It matters what you choose for yourself. We know you have a choice. We know you have two paths. We know you can decide to stay in the heartbreak of something from the past. And if that's what you wanted to do, you could do it. But it's important for you to know that that is a choice that that is what you would be choosing as opposed to choosing your future, the freedom of your future, wild and free and exposed and absolutely exactly who you are. Now, I find this Knight of Wands energy so interesting in you. And I feel like this might be a product as well of heartbreak that, you know, when the heart hurts, sometimes we dive into this fire energy and we just plow forward fierce towards something else to help distract us, which is a gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful, yummy distraction. That's not a bad distraction. It's not a seven of cups distraction. It's, it's good. It's something like, yes, yeah, hold on to that. Um, but, but I find it interesting that this kind of maybe masculine energy sort of rode out of your heartbreak, which makes sense. You wanna protect yourself and you should take your own side. Okay, we're still asking about blocks. I'm not ready to shut that question down. I'm not ready to close that door. And I'm feeling something back here and I'm feeling this card that my thumb is on, the under the underside of this card, okay. Ah, we have the Nine of Pentacles. Now the Nine of Pentacles is coming in as a block. And I feel like this is exactly what it is. Like it's exactly what the card reads as, that you are possibly doing really well for yourself, making money, you're being productive, you're getting glamorous, maybe you've made some physical changes coming out of this heartbreak, you wanna look your best, you wanna feel your best. There is something incredibly enticing about you and there's also something incredibly abundant about you, but there's this also is showing up as a block, that there's a possibility these distractions or these uh, medicines, I wanna call them medicines because they're kind of little medicines for the heartbreak. Your heart gets hurt and so, you know what? I'm gonna be so much better and I'm gonna up level in all of these ways and do all of these things so I feel worthy but remember, you were worthy before. You are worthy now and you are worthy in the future. Nothing changes that. No, you don't have to make a certain amount of money for that to happen. It makes perfect sense because you have this drive and this fire in you. So you're sort of been like hustling right into success here. But this could be acting as a block and keeping you from opening your heart up to something new. So, you know, notice notice where you're like, I'm fine. I don't need anybody. <laughs> I don't need anyone. I don't need love. I can buy myself happiness. You know, just notice, you know, what's going on. Be real with yourself. Doesn't mean you have to change anything. It doesn't mean you have to take action on what you see as a truth. It's just saying, hey, I own this truth and I'm going to make a decision from that space. 
Okay, so now I would like to just ask, I would like to just ask about anything we need to know that is not apparent to us that we need to ask about. Something that might be coming up that's, I'm feeling something back in here, okay. Oh, okay, very interesting. Now we pulled another duplicate card. We have the seven of pentacles. So this is something that's important for you to know that we didn't know to ask. And the first way that I'm reading this, I don't know if I'm reading this a second way at all, but the first thing that came to me that felt like, it feels like there is another energy here as well though. So I'm gonna leave that open, but let's go down the first path. First path, this person, your crush, this person we've been talking about, this is a patient person. They're willing to plant seeds and patiently wait for them to grow. You don't have to rush yourself. And then I, you know, you don't have to um, think that they're going to expect a whole bunch of things out of you. Remember, you're walking down similar paths right now. So the timing of this should feel pretty good, honestly. It should feel like like, okay, we slowly, slowly, slowly walk here. We slowly, slowly walk here. Once we know the truth, remember we got that Knight of Swords energy coming in and whoosh, things take off, but don't even worry about that now. Just worry about this. The cards are coming in to say, hey, there is patience here. This person has beautiful patience. They can plant the seed and they can wait. This is not someone who is gonna push you to grow faster than you're ready to grow. And that's beautiful. You don't have to get scared of that. That is the path that really came up for me. Now, I'm not feeling another path now, so I'm gonna let it go, but I am gonna pull one more card because I was feeling some other little energy in there. So there was something to that and it kind of just disappeared for me and I would like to pull another card. I would like to pull another card. No, the Two of Cups, which is kind of like our lover's card in the Minor Arcana. The Cups giving feelings and emotions. This is a beautiful communication card. Again, I'm, I'm just getting really good feelings off this. I, I feel really good about this. this feels great. Uh, remember where these blocks are, you know, remember this person's maybe never going to make the first move. They might have a really hard time with that. It could be very difficult for them to ever come off their perch of, well, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. I'm going to just sort of plant these seeds and see if they grow. And, you know, but who knows, you know, like those blocks exist, but, but, you know, besides that, things feel really good. They feel really good. You're both coming from a very similar space. And there feels like there's this mutual attraction, this, this real potential for a future as well. Um, real potential for the future as well. Someone you can talk to, laugh with, understand, be heard by. Someone who's not going to judge you. Someone that truly wants to talk to who you are. Not, you know, fake you, pretend you, masked up you, but you, just exactly who you are. And they will bask in how wonderful that experience is. Yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. This could be really good. Well, that is, this is a striking reading, I would say. Let's pull our anchor card over. Uh, and maybe just like open up your hands. It's so juicy. Also, if you love readings like this and you have not subscribed, please subscribe now. It means the world to me. And if you love content like this, it helps let us know that you want more. You want more of the goodies. Okay. Let's pull over our anchor card. So our anchor card is the Knight of Cups. Well, that makes perfect sense. This feels so right. Let your intuition pop in here for a second. I want you to feel your intuition. I want to keep bringing you back to that, feeling what's coming up for you. Now, what's coming up for me is that this person 
is coming in and it's, it is slow. I mean, this night, you know, walking on in, kind of standing still in this moment, cups getting into feelings and emotions, offering up this sort of feeling and emotion experience. This is not charging full in night. This is not galloping in night. This is walking in. It is a little slow, but it is authentic. It is genuine. It is real and it is heartfelt. And it's a good partner. This is a good person, a person with a good heart and uh, an, a, an ability to really feel things and might do it a little softly. It might not be full charge, full roar, full gallop. It might feel soft and it might feel um, tender, but it is authentic and genuine and still divinely masculine. <laughs> I would love for you to drop me some comments below. If you feel vulnerable enough to drop some comments and like share information, I would love that. I read all the comments just to tell me how this hit you. If it resonates with you, I would love to hear that. It means the world to me. I love reading everything and I love offering up, you know, some blessings and some, some energy of my own to back you up in what you're writing. Also, I would like for us to drop is saying, I'm opening my hands to this and I am riding into this. I would like us to drop, there are so many things we could drop here. There are just so many options. It's very hard to choose. Let's see what's just coming up. Let's see what's coming up. Let's see. I want something that represents springtime. I want something that represents that growth, that feeling of the Empress energy, but also just this feeling of a new beginning, a new cycle starting. So some sort of fresh plant, uh, a tree, a plant, a anything that makes you think, ah, oh, oxygen, air, being outside, fresh, new beginning. And use your imagination, get creative, whatever makes you feel like that new beginning, because there is something really beautiful happening here. And it is just like nature, it moves at its own time, but boy, is it good when it comes. Hmm. I love you, my dear one. I'm sending you so much good energy for this, but I'm sending you so much good energy for you. I love and appreciate you, and I am grateful to have you here. Until I see your precious self again, mwah, mia. <laughs>